300 coming to a theater near you in 2007 and also your PSP. I'm standing with Reeve Thompson, who is the producer on RTX Red Rock. What is RTX all about? When an alien has a weapon and okay. you want to acquire it, right. I want to stun the alien. So, so I'm I the take, alien. Yeah, and I I'm take my weapon and I just kind of... <laughs> One other uh, functionality on his arm, and okay. Wheeler sometimes uses this when he, he wants to get out of an interview or something like that, uh, which is uh, Wheeler's grappling hook. So I just go. Um, didn't that game suck? Yeah, RTX stunk up the joint for sure. We have no idea. All right, everyone, now it is time to open our version of the morning paper. It's like uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. We're jumping off the top rope and uh. going around the net. Oh, will <laughs> If you heard a laughing sound in the theater, at the beginning of the Pirates of the Caribbean, it was probably because the trailer for Rocky Balboa was playing. Yeah. That's right, the Italian stallion is stepping back into the ring one last time. And in case you missed it, it's last, in case you missed it last weekend, here is a peek. Who was the greatest? Who was the best of all time? If two athletes from different eras could actually compete against one another, who would come out on top? In one corner, the reigning champion at Mason the Line Dixon. He'll be pitted against the former two-time heavyweight champion, Rocky Balboa. Computer says Rocky Balboa would be triumphant. Mason the Line Dixon? What? Really? You don't like that name? That's a crappy nickname. I, I mean, love that a, name. I get it, but it's really not that I intimidating. Think it's great. You should be well, like who would you hammerhead. Be? I'd be pretty boy. Pretty boy Pereira. <laughs> it works, right? <laughs> well, you know, I gotta tell you. When you hear that music come on, you oh, can't help awesome but just love it. Well, you know, I was playing the trailer this morning at my desk, and all the coworkers are coming by, and they're like, oh, yeah, it looks pretty lame, right? I'm like, yeah. actually, no, I'm really psyched. Because I like what they're, they're doing. Yeah, and they're, they're addressing that he's old now. Yeah, he's they're 60. like, you got arthritis. You have bad knees. Yeah. You, you, you're doing do the eggs, eggs with, uh, what, Metamucil. Which we will never do ever <laughs> like, again. Yeah, his, his training montage includes FiberCon, and I'm okay but, with that. But this time, this Rocky, they add in um, something with computers or something like that. Well, yeah, it's like a virtual match of who mm -hmm. would win in a fight, and that's why Rocky yeah. gets back He'll in the ring. I don't think he's going to win, though. Of I think they're going to let him lose win. and go out gracefully. Of course he'll win. Five bucks. Five, five bucks says Rocky puts on a hell of a fight but loses. All right, five bucks, and um, when I win, five bucks in that finger thing you're talking about. Is that is that the payment? Yeah, be good. Uh, all right, I'm all going right. to go on the line. Done. <laughs> now, yesterday we introduced you to Chuck Morris, and today it's time to meet another gentleman by the name of Josh Haraway. Now, good old Josh has spent his valuable time trying to transform himself into Tupac Shakur. What? Hey, the what? bathtub okay, shot. I that is a waste of time. That's awesome is what it is. And, and from the looks of the pic, he's doing a pretty good job. I mean, he's got the abs. You know, he's doing some I mean, he there. looks like him, but I mean, isn't there something better you could do with your life? Thug life tattoo. Hello. He's even got kind of the gangsta attitude going on, did as you, you can wait, see did there. You, did you just say gangsta? Gangsta. With an yeah. A? I was uh, getting crunk with it right then. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Get my Don't score ever say that again. No? Please. All right. I listen to a lot of uh, the hip hop on XM. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I can drop it like it's hot. Now, uh, all they need to do is actually find a guy who looks like Biggie and start an East Coast, West Coast. I totally. Rap who, what's food. the name? There's a, there is a Biggie. That, what's um, oh, our camera? What's the? Gorilla Black. Gorilla Black. Black. Gorilla Black. So there is actually one, but he's from Compton, so. But He'll guess actually he, shoot. Him. But he's not a real Tupac. <laughs> you got to go there. I'm just saying, it's a feud, and he he's will not a real Tupac. Shot. He's not a real Biggie. They'll match up. It'll be awesome. And finally today, a redneck launching 8,500 fireworks in under a minute. And I'm setting up some bottle rockets to shoot off here. You got your duct tape. How many bottle rockets are you going to shoot at one time? This will be loaded with 8,500. 8, All right, I guess we better start moving back now, huh? Of, I guess we might be moseying him back now. Now don't beat up the bottle rockets. <laughs> I know. Might be able to get back from the fireworks. <laughs> like what? I, okay, if you guys were offended that I called him a redneck, I think that um, <laughs> I think it's pretty clear. Listen to the setup. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. No more internet for you guys today. Aww. Just spoil. Try to kill them. They bring back the sports almanac, and then Biff hits him with the cane. Awesome. <laughs> Chris. Bottom line on this, Doctor. It's a buy, yeah. All right, there you have it. For love fans it. and non-fans alike, Doctor Who is a buy. Almost out of time, but I know you love to get a quickie in, so exactly. uh, let's do it. If you want a good suspense thriller, I recommend getting this uh, boxed Asian set. Danger After Dark, one film in particular, 
Suicide Club. You love the Asian body. Asian schoolgirls killing themselves, bloody, How suspenseful. can you go wrong with that? Gotta get it. Danger After Dark box set. Fantastic. Great quick great. picks, Dr. Gore. Thanks, Thanks for coming great. on. Thanks As always, me. folks, visit filmthreat.com. I know you and I and probably everybody else out there will continue watching regardless of, of where he pops of course. up. So. Yeah. Good luck, Dave. All right, coming up tomorrow, you better be ready because we are having the world's <laughs> biggest Mentos explosion. And Olivia's shown off a rack. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. And finally, I, I think you have, to, you have a short film to show us, Yes, right? that's right. I do. Recently, I completed this <laughs> short film called Phone Tag with comedian Nick Boone. It is so funny. He's an amazing comedian. Right. Everyone's going to know him. It's a little twisted, but one of the best experiences I've had in Los Angeles. Watch. This isn't a break. It's a break up. Oh, and could you not text me every time you order the same coffee drink I order? Do you ever think about butterflies? Hey, uh, it's like uh, 9 a.m. and I haven't heard back from you yet. I was really worried, so I called your mom. And apparently you told her not to talk to me anymore? It's like three hours. Is that my yearbook? Have a fun summer. Stay cool. Love, James. Yeah, have a fun summer. Dry humping my girlfriend, James. <laughs> They, uh, they actually need to see the, the whole thing. Yeah, you it's have to really, see the whole really thing. Yeah. Where, where can they, can they catch it on yeah, YouTube? You, or go to, you can catch it on YouTube. You can go to nickboon.com um, or you can go to my MySpace page, MySpace dash Omun. Look at you. You're so yeah. connected with the kids. I am. I All love right. the kids. Well done, Olivia. Now we have to end the show in style. Let's smash another guitar with the larger than life superstar, Chris Jericho. Chris, what's your last smash there, buddy? I just like to say, I just filmed a short film as well. It's about me in the shower. Think what? about it. Uh, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I'm actually going to smash the cake and the guitar with the cylinder. Okay? This is going to be the grand finale. You ready? Wait, I want a piece of cake. Okay, is it good? Okay, I got it. I'm good. Is it vanilla? Okay, you ready? Here we go. All the studio audience, of all of us, let's share and let's get it going. Ready? Come on. Hey! Three, two, Here we go! One. Chris, come on, take two. two on that one. Okay, back stand down. back, stand back. Ready, come on. Oh, wait, that's splintering. That actually is vanilla. That's is good. it good? Right. My second rule. Okay, ready? Here we go. Go, go, go. Okay, ready? Here we go. Go, go, go. Move your host to like talk about yourself in the third person. <laughs> Please don't do that. If that's where, is that's where you're going. Please gonna, don't do that. I'm gonna actually start it off right now, if that's okay. <clears throat> the, oh. Ke the Kevin is very happy with Microsoft, by the way. Okay, Kevin, I'll, I'll play along. Why is that? You don't know why the Kevin's happen? happy with Michael? No, Michael's? the Kevin, no. The Kevin is very happy because Uno finally works, ladies and gentlemen. Uno, come on, two or three people. No. Okay, Thank Kevin, you. I didn't know you were still on the whole Uno thing. Microsoft released a patch. Uh -huh. uh, but there was a problem with the matchmaking. So essentially, you go to play Uno, and I know that everybody's playing Uno late on a Wednesday night. Drunk Everyone. On red wine. Yeah, Everybody sure. in the world. And so you go, and, but the matchmaking doesn't work. So it's like I say, I want to play, you say you want to play, but we don't but meet don't, up. But now they fixed that. They fixed it. And to celebrate it, what are we doing, Mun? We're watching Uno live. That's the right. Higher beginning of the show. Let's fire it up. Can we get some Uno on the screen? Oh, hey, look at that. That was good. Nice Thank you. I, I, I cued it there. <laughs> All right, so let's go to multiplayer game. Okay, this is, great. This is what I know. This is my nightly ritual. So this is what you do. Yeah, we go to ranked match because, of course, we want everybody to know how much we suck at Uno. Kevin, what happened to the old card table with your grandma and grandpa playing Uno? Why are we? Why are you doing this online? Not high def enough. Okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, plus, it's much more entertaining to trash talk people when they're not your grandparents, because then you don't have to hear about it for years to come. So as you can see, that, there we go. Hey, we found a lobby. Look, people are playing Uno. Yeah. That's awesome. I actually, I'm sorry. I just had a kind of a realization. This is why you're so cool, Kevin. <laughs> you're on TV. Add it to the you list. You could be hanging out with the fast crowd, but no, you're at home playing Uno. Yeah. Uno and the internet. It's uh, it's kind of my blow. <laughs> well, right now, let's take that, wait, a look. Do you, you hear that sack music? You hear it? And Did you interrupt me the Uno to talk lobby about music? that elevator music? That's what you it's listen like to. It's like Lethal Weapon. It's like that lonely sax player. I love it. I'm going to stop you right now. All right. Fine. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what others do in their own time when we go around the net. First up, a story that will come as no surprise to anyone. Lindsay Lohan was caught giving a hummer to some dude <laughs> on film. Yeah, don't get too excited. That was actually a, for a role in a movie. Oh. Not a Paris Hilton style sex tape. Oh, that's um, weak. Oh, what, look, yeah. wow, look at that. That guy looks all scraggly, too. Maybe she's trying to get the last of the blow off his keys in his wallet. <laughs> I mean, that's something that he would do, you right? Act, yeah. Well, you know what? I actually love how bored the guy looks. Very, right? yeah, he really He's is. like, I'm getting a Hummer or whatever. <laughs> like, dude, I need a cigarette. Where, where'd I leave him? Well, hey, would you actually, um, would you ever hook up with Lindsay? Out of curiosity? 
Yeah, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a real big fan of penicillin, so yeah, I'd hook up with Oh, it. my gosh. Do you think she should actually be good at going downtown? I, I don't know. I, I'm just glad that she's finally getting some protein. I mean, the girl, uh, the girl needed to beef up. I mean, may, she was, she was she, rail thin. Hopefully she's fit. I mean, right. Oh, why? You don't want her to bulk up? Oh, my gosh. I like her she weighing like 95 it. pounds and looking like I could blow her over. Okay, moving on. All right. <laughs> moving on. Next up. The good folks at Modern Drunkard Magazine have chosen their uh, top ten drinking movie game. I'll let you see it right there. Still looking Join. to turn the game. Awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and finally today, don't you hate it when food gets stuck in your throat oh, a little yeah. bit earlier, actually, like, kind of coughed up something? Well, you guys, here's a snake with that very same problem. Only, listen to this, the food is a freaking baby hippo. Is that like a euphemism? Or? No. Okay, snake. Wait. I get it. Look. It's a snake. Yeah, snake. Holy! It's a freaking baby <laughs> hippo. That's awesome. It looks like it's giving birth. Uh, it does. Right? It looks something. Okay, now you got a question. We spit it back out. Obviously, he didn't eat it. So, like, right. is it dead? I don't. I don't know, know how that works. The, the, the most important thing here is that the snake has obviously no gag reflex at all. So apparently, <laughs> he's taken lessons from Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> It's that, incredible looking. Um, I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and throw up a hippo right now. That actually, my my jaw actually unlocks like that, too, just in case you guys wanted to know. She got the job, folks. <laughs> now, remember, go to attackoftheshow.com for the links to everything that you just saw. Now, sure, World War III might have just started today, but here's what really matters. It's Layla Cayley with the feed headline. Thanks, Layla. <laughs> now, Sarah Lane and Brenda Moran, the former hosts of Attack of the Show, they're on a year-long journey around the world. And what's Very exciting. What's incredible is that they actually, they're spending their entire life saving. That is true. Doing it. It's an adventure yeah. of a lifetime. And here's part one, folks. Catch up. They're in Greece. Well, hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Sarah Lane. This is Brenda Moran. If you don't know us, we are formerly of G4's Attack of the Show. That's right. And you're in luck because we have started a around the world year-long trip and we're going to show you our adventures so right now we are in a greek island called santorini santorini is known for the world's best sunsets that's what they say do you guys know the sunsets is this where the sun sets so it sets here this is yeah, where it sets here, right. okay what are you eating can i have one it's just going to go Right in the ocean. Exactly. Okay, cool. I've never seen that before. What do you think about these Certainly. dogs? Little tiny clutter men about Well, I don't blame them. Let me tell you a little something about Ia. There are no escalators. There are, however, four and a half million stairs. And every one of them you must walk just to get from here to there. Sarah's not really helping matters much either. Come on, honey, we're gonna be late for our dinner reservation. God, I am so tired. One thing that may surprise you, actually, in Greece, is that there are a lot of Attack of the Show fans. Attack of the Show? Is that why you're here? No? Attack of the Show? Yeah? Thanks for watching. Attack of the Show? Good to see you. Do you want a picture or anything like that? you want to get a picture with me? you need an autograph? You don't, you don't need one? Okay. Well, that's it from beautiful Santorini, Greece. Coming up next, we go to Turkey where we don't speak the language or know any of the local customs. And I heard their toilets aren't Western. I don't What does uh, that even mean? I think we're going to find out. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many fans okay. in Greece. We're, we're big all over. <laughs> all right, there's more to come from the Morans. We'll be checking in with them periodically. And if you just can't get enough of the couple, visit brendanandsarah.com. Stay with us. We, there, might, they might. Uh, it's just a browse for me uh, um, because, you know, I'm curious to see where it goes, but it's just, it's just kind of not quite doing it for me. All right, two browsers. Give them something right. good to read. Give, a, okay. give them like a quick pick that all they right. should definitely go pick up. Right? I have a little quick pick for you. This is called The Escapist. And uh, basically what it is, it's, um, it's by Brian K. Vaughn. He's one of my favorite writers. The thing I like about this, it's only a buck. It's only a book, and it was already published in a larger anthology, but it's starting an ongoing series. This is really a comic book about writing comic books. So it's by comic nerds for comic nerds about comic nerds. So they if you're a it. comic nerd like me, you're probably going to dig this. If there was ever a comic you'd recommend, it'd be one with that tag. Nerd, I'm there a nerd. There you have it, folks. The Escapist is a buy. Thank you, Blair. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. for having me. Look, folks, if you can't get enough of the muscles, this July, Attack of the Show will be coming to you live from the biggest nerd event in the world. 
Comic-Con. That's right, 100,000 rabid fans. Indiana Jones game and its brand new technology. Now the game doesn't even have a name yet, but we got an early look. George Lucas has said that there is no character better suited for video games than Indiana Jones. And I think we agree here at LucasArts. We're talking about the new Indiana Jones game. This thing is very true to life. Yes. Well, what we've got is an Indiana Jones 2007. It's some next generation gameplay. And that's what we're really excited about here at LucasArts. We are rolling out some exciting new technology in the Indiana Jones game. I think it's really going to change the way people play games. This is the most intelligent AI I have ever seen. They react to everything. Absolutely. And they react in a different way every time. So what we've got is behavior-based AI. This is something people have never seen before. This is something you're not going to see anywhere else. This is euphoria, and it's really exciting technology. What it means is that for every payoff in the game, for everything you do, you're going to get a different reaction. You're going to have characters falling down, getting back up, catching themselves when they fall. They're going to be bracing themselves for impact before they hit the ground. This is not a free can suite of animations. This is all about behaviors. It's a whole new way of thinking about video games. It's a whole new way of playing video games. And for us, it's a whole new way of making video games. So what we do is we take a very dynamic environment, an environment that has some of our other new technology in it, which is digital and molecular matter. We put all that together and we put these very intelligent characters in it, and it's really simulation-based. So what that means, it's never the same toys for the character. The days of scripted sequences and predefined moments are over. It's all about discovering surprising new moments. Well, and no better character is there for that technology than Indiana Jones. Absolutely. What are we going to be doing with him this time? It's actually a story that's been written under the direction of George Lucas himself. So oh, you actually worked with George We have collaborated, collaborated closely with George on this story, and it's a story of biblical proportions. How about the soundtrack? Are you going to use the same music? Uh, absolutely. This will, this will be a true indie experience, all the way down to the details of the sound, the voice. And this is the reason to go buy a next-gen console. It's going to be this type of game. I, I heard a rumor mm -hmm. that... Uh, you don't play games anymore. You, yeah. you, you think that you've outgrown video games. I've not outgrown them, I just haven't had time to play any. We wanted to simulate that when Spider-Man is fighting normal people, yep. that he, has to, he pulls his punches. And so he's got to kind of finish people off with this web to dual move and kind of keep them in. Hey, let me show you. Hey, John, you got a second? Is everybody here at Treyarch have this ability, man? Oh, I, I, yeah. I think this is incredible. I want to have know. the power. I want to be able to swing around. And, do I need a job? <laughs> this interview is over. All right, you lined up. <laughs> what could be sexier than chicks in prison? You know, they, you know they've got a wild side, right? They're yeah. Obviously, they're, they're locked up. And, and because they're locked up, they can't go anywhere when you try to put the moves on them. Hmm? Think about it. Finally, true. there's a site that ranks all the best babes behind bars what? in the Des Moines Polk County Jail. Yeah. Wow. Huh? No, actual jailbird hotties. I can imagine you sitting up all last night looking over these. Well, it was only for a good five minutes. But let's <laughs> check a few of them out. Here we go. First up, oh, oh sweet little you. Jessica. Uh, I'm gonna give her a fiver. Do you know what she did? I have no idea. This isn't like the MySpace Girl of the Week. All I know is that they they're don't, locked up. They don't up put their just, list yeah, they don't, crime. They, they don't get to customize their homepage. <laughs> it's just like, I'm incarcerated. Here oh, yeah, I well, am. She was pretty. Here's the next one. She was good. Ashley, who has some uh, crazy eyebrows. Wow, I thought they took gorgeous. away the tweezers in prison, though, and, and she's doing some grooming. <laughs> no. Well, I guess maybe she, because you know, you can actually pull your own um, eyebrows out with uh, your fingers. So really? Maybe she was doing that. I, I guess, well, I guess you could. You have time in prison to do that. Oh, she's hot. She's not bad. I'm gonna give her a seven. Megan, though. It's hot that she looks sad. Aww. You know, like she knows Man. she knows Daddy's disappointed. She can't go home, so it's off to the Silver Rain for, for a little bit of Amanda. So that gets her a nine. <laughs> uh, but finally, and I, I don't know the name on this one. I haven't I haven't okay. seen this one yet. Uh, can we get the fun? <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> that's Eva Longoria, and she's not in jail. That's hideous. She <laughs> should be. She needs to wear makeup. Oh, that's always. ridiculous. Oh, and finally, anyway. this has been around for quite a while, but we have decided to dig it up for your enjoyment. Okay. Yeah, it's the Tourette's guy we all know and love. This one is a classic, so try to listen to the crazy stuff he says. Unfortunately, we gotta beat most of it out, yeah. but I think you'll get the gist.
Tourette's is a really sad disease, but really funny at the same time. I did in, in eight. <laughs> it's really, it's funny. You can't help but laugh. Killing Sorry. babies is wrong, but a good sport. <laughs> I mean, you can't. I, I disagree. But okay. in eighth grade, okay, in eighth grade, I had this boyfriend named Nate. All right. And he had Tourette's, but no one knew. No one knew at first because he moved into town, and all of a sudden, he, his Tourette's, everyone has a different Tourette's. Like, they say different things. His was laughing, but like, you know, laughing, barking. He barked. He barked. I don't remember. So whenever he would feel it coming on, <laughs> you would feel Because um, Tourette's, you can't control it, so you could feel it coming on, so he'd be like, <laughs> and he would turn it into a laugh. Awesome. And he sat behind me. He sat behind me in math, and he would shake my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was really? my that was my trend. Now, did so you break was, up with him because of it, or did you buy him bacon strips and it, toss them at him? <laughs> did you no, encourage it? It was back in eighth grade where you just said you were going out, but you oh, didn't you didn't actually do anything. No, it fizzled okay, out. But, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it was my only only That's encounter awesome. with Tourette. Now I know the bark at you. All right, be sure to visit our website at tagintheshow.com for the links to everything. These secrets and scoops like nobody else. It's time for AOTS Gaming, and joining me is video game enthusiast and X-Play host, Adam Sessler. I'm an enthusiast and a host? You are, and you play Segway Polo on the weekends, correct? Yes, of course. Well, yeah, that, yeah, until that accident. I, but, uh, hey, how's your knee doing? Is it better? Yeah, it's not good for me. I'm sorry about that. Let's get into it, then. Let's get to the gaming. Valve Software's Gabe Newell announced that Half-Life 2 is going to be released for the 360 and the PlayStation 3. Right. This Huge. Is, and, and this is, well, this is really episode two, which is, which is obviously, you know... The, the, episode one and two, I, I believe it. Actually, you know, that's not true. It is episode one and two, which is good, because I can't get episode one run on my computer right now, because it's too hot in my bedroom, and right. everything's <laughs> frying right just crashing like crazy. But this, yeah, this is good. I mean, yeah, I mean, can news. Valve do any wrong? I mean, they're giving you one and two, and then they're also including some new weapon, the portal gun. Have you heard yeah, about this? Yeah, yeah, no, I have heard about the portal gun. It, this is, I mean... All of this sounds sounds very exciting. The part that I really want to see is how does the Source engine look on the PS3 and the 360? Right. Because I really like I, I like that technology, and everyone's really using a lot of Epic stuff mm -hmm. with, with 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 their Unreal Engine. And it would be nice to see something that looks a little bit different. So yeah, I want if to see Source runs great, you know, it's then, great yeah. if developers can take advantage yeah, of that. That would be a dark of might magic on 360 and the PS3. Well, aside from the episode one and two and the Portal Tech, which has me excited. Yeah, I know where you're going with this. Team Fortress Deuce. Yes. Team Fortress 2, we all thought it was dead, and then they released this screenshot. Yeah. Saying, it's coming out. to be in a bit of trouble. Several, several major movie studios have ceased supporting the UMD format used to deliver movies on the handheld. Um, since, since we started this little fun little Monday afternoon relationship thing, have we ever <laughs> said, have we said a good thing about Sony yet? Have we willed to report there was, there was one time where I said Guitar Heroes was awesome. Yeah. But that's more of a harmonics thing about a Sony. Usually, every time it's just like, well, Sony did this this yeah. week. Well, uh, is the UMD the, uh, the new uh, Betamax? Uh, for movies, yeah. I mean, I know at one point they were talking about putting the movies on, uh, on the memory stick. I don't know if they're still holding to that. It's like, um, hi, Sony, it, it, it's not... It's the it's not the format that's the problem. <laughs> you have this kind of not very exciting technology called the PSP with Ridge Racer, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's you know it, it, people aren't into it. They it's don't true. really want to see the movies on it. They're not really buying games. Yeah, and you know what? I don't want good stuff. I don't want it on memory stick either. Let me download no. it from the movie store. Like, can, why can't I, they have the technology here yet? I know, but really, I also I'll just wait till I get home and watch the movie. Good point. I'll play my DS on my way home. Well, there you go. That's it, folks. Sorry, Tony. We still love you. Somewhere. How does he bounce back from benefits? How about resurrecting the Clerks franchise 12 years after the original? Chris Gore sat down with Kevin Smith, Rosario Dawson, and the rest of the View Q crew so uh, we could, too, feel the passion of the Clerks. <laughs> Randall Graves. You work here, too? Jesus, anyone else from our graduating class back there? Kevin Smith and his band of merry underachievers from Jersey are back to prove that you can grow old without growing up. Are you concerned that you were going to potentially ruin the first film? Or I mean, there was a lot more trepidation from outside. Like, if you went to the internet, all everyone was just like, oh, what a stupid idea. He's going to f***ing ruin it. Me, I just, like, I had the benefit of knowing what I wanted to do, so I never felt like we are going to ruin it. You know, I felt like it honors the first one, and then we actually kind of move it forward. When Kevin put out the call, people old and new came running to do the sequel, some for very different reasons. We are going to peep something we've been talking about since we saw Bachelor Party when we were 12. <laughs> the donkey show sold me. I was, I was, you had me at the donkey. I've always wanted to work with Kevin. I think he's amazing. And not only is the writing really amazing, but, and, and you're back with characters that, even if you don't know the first film, you get right away. But they're just, they're these friends, and like, they can just, there's no filters when they're talking, and it's just so funny and so great. But there's also like this whole underlying story. I love you, Becky. I'm pregnant, Dante. There's a sweetness, there's a heart to this movie. How did you guys sell the heart? The interesting thing to me was 
how much heart like Clerks 2 actually contains, which was surprising to me in that it actually pulls together and works. I definitely think it'll be a, a surprise for the, for the audience. It, it sneaks up on you. You're not expecting it, and we bring it out when it hits the best. Like, we didn't set out to make what people came to call a cult classic. We just set out to make about a movie about dudes sitting around talking. It's great that people said wonderful things about that movie over the years, but at the same time, you don't want to believe the hype. You know, because it's like, it, I know it means a bunch of things to different, different people, but for me, it was a movie about dudes sitting around talking. And Clerks 2 is a movie about dudes sitting around talking, and we just take it a little further. You know, those taste like flies, don't they? Now, what do you think Jay has been doing between Clerks 1 and Clerks 2? Um, Go on little adventures, selling weed. Jay's been selling weed, and then uh, then he got busted for, for with weed, and uh, went to rehab, and and uh, you know, in between maybe maybe getting a little ass. Who knows? Hopefully. Whether selling jerky or flipping burgers, you keep making them. We'll keep watching. Clark's Deuce opens this Friday. Coming up, I'll show you how to buy your very own lesbian porn star. We're solid to say, hey, Granny, guess what? It came from eBay! What's going on here? Yeah, Comic Con, look, carpet trash cans. I know, cans. I'm so excited. All right, buy your very own lesbian porn star. Folks, you got me listening. Don't get too excited. I'm sorry. It's actually just a piece of uh, tinfoil uh, glue, uh, cardboard, and glitter, which I, you could work for me but it's not even in a cylindrical shape oh so you can't really insert no it's like dry humping an ironing board it's not gonna well, how much does it go for 2.99 only one have bid you tried far. to hump an iron board i you know i had an ex that was pretty much like two tylenol <laughs> on ironing board so it works out you can get the job done okay mr woody hot dog fork yeah that's right these metal hot dog forks are usually made so that the hot dogs look like the little guys johnson oh that's awesome yeah but look closely this one was made backwards and it looks like this Mr. Woody oh, is yeah. actually receiving. Ooh. You know what I mean? That's not <laughs> kosher. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's like up a biker bar, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Uh, it's going for eleven dollars and fifty cents. And there are two bids. Two bids. Those are kind of cute. Yeah. That's 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 novelty. That's kitsch. <laughs> All right. Advertise on some guy's shirt during his intercourse experience. Hmm. Yes, he keeps the shirt on. Kind of like me. Unfortunately, it's not what you think though. He actually wants you to sponsor his visit to Intercourse, Pennsylvania. You know, Amish country. Wow. The land of horse and buggies and no electricity and funny hats. <laughs> so, there you have it. We're hoping that the visit will actually include hot Amish action like uh, butter churning or barn raising. Oh, nothing. How much is it going for? And it gets me hotter. 122.50. Three bids. Wow. So, I guess these kind of silly stunts still work on the eBay. Not well, bad. Well, you know what? This is actually an amazing eBay thing. Walk on roll in the NBC show Scrubs. This last one is just plain cool. It's mm. for a walk-on role on the hit show Scrubs. You get to spend the day with the cast. You walk on yeah. for a role on Scrubs? Walk on. Yeah, you get to go through the wardrobe and get placed in scenes with the stars of the show. You basically just walk by. Sure, it's a bit part, but it's for a good cause. The auction will benefit the National MS Society. Wow. So like, a walk-on role yeah. on Scrubs. It's like if someone just walked by right now, that would be it. Fantastic. And it's actually going for $3,252.03. There are 26 bids. My agent's begging me to pony up the cash. Please forward your career. No, no, no. Basic cable. Basic cable. Where the money's at. All right, folks. Always expect the unexpected when. It came from eBay. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Wow. Ah. Oh. All right, everyone. Now it is time to look at the odds of fascinating and the downright dangerous. We're showing you stuff that nobody else is when we go around, around the, the net. net. All right, you lined up at midnight to buy one. You even paid a Nobel Prize winning scientist to help you boost your brain age. Yes, we know you truly love your DS life. <laughs> and that's why our first item of the day is making a lot of Nintendo fans really, really upset, Olivia. Oh, big why? fanboy cheers. Apparently, talkbackers everywhere are complaining that the hinge on the DS Lite is defective huh. because it keeps cracking. And Nintendo, they refuse to do anything about it unless you want to pay what? 50 bucks for the repair. So that's we did. Like we decided to do our own little investigation. Here is a DS Lite here, my friends. Yeah. Running. Looks good, right? You can see the hinge. Do you hear that? Yeah, little... I hear it clicking. It's crack. It's like, it does a little, it does a little click. I can't tell if it's gonna, I mean, I don't know if it, uh, if you just. Are you I... oh, Kevin! Oh, yeah, you, you see, no, you see the way that just snapped? You broke a DS Lite? No, did you see the way it just snapped Wait, no, right off? You have no respect for gaming? No, but I'm just saying, look at how, look at how flimsy it is. Oh, did you see that piece right there? No, no, no. Did you see? 
Look at this. Look at, look at the way it's like it's, if you hit it enough times and okay. just if you get if you get on it, just elbow drop it this, and really just take it to it. That's so like Kevin. Is, okay. Did you see that? Look at this. Okay, you're this is really unacceptable. Look at that. Even the screen okay, pops out. You know, you know, they're kids. That's shoddy design. They're saving design. their money for this. They're parents who can't even buy this for their kids for Christmas because they can't afford it, and you just freaking broke one. Well, now they was, know better because, obviously, it's a flimsy unit, and I'm sorry. I, I expect <laughs> durability out of my was, product. It's flimsy? Yeah, it is. Great. Okay. Just, okay, next up, as you may have heard, Carmen Electra and Dave Navarro are getting a divorce. Aww. Shocking, I know. What kind of world are we living in when an ex stripper and a sort of gay rock star who never wears a shirt but always manages to put oh. on eyeliner can't even stay together <laughs> oh, forever? But sad as it is, Carmen is back on the market and to celebrate her, here's a look at her website about strip aerobics. Oh yeah. yeah, now we're talking. Exactly. So if you guys want to stay in shape and still look like a slut, this is the workout for you. I just didn't think most people have um, stripper poles in their home. Well, they have the portable ones now. So that's good, but the problem is that some granny in Iowa, she buys the video and she tries the workout thing and it's like the new tie bow, and it's, that's not going to be so hot. She's breaking a hip. And, you know you'd uh, like it. You'd watch. You'd buy I would, it. I would download it. At least it. rent. Nightly. Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's at least a rent. That's my verdict. <laughs> Speaking of hot, actually, some guys are so jaded that it takes more than Carmen Electra to get them going. Believe it or not. Really? They need something uh, super special, if huh. you will. And that's where GimpGirls.com comes in. Yeah! <laughs> Girls with broken legs, girls with, with sprained ankles. I don't care if they have stubbed toes. Basically, if they can't get away from you when you're making creepy advances, they're on this website, and therefore they're in my heart. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I and, mean, and it's only $19.95 a month. Oh, okay, so basically, screw that starving kid you sponsor in Rwanda. Sign up today. Yeah, who cares if a village can eat for years? I can get off yeah. for like, gimp girls. That's, That's sweet. exciting. <laughs> and finally, the Nissan brothers are two artists who set out to prove just how easy it is to steal a bike in New York City. Take a look. This is, uh, this is actually kind of sad. This dude uh, put his bike in four different spots in New York, used bolt cutters one time, and plain as day, just, you know, ganked the chain and went off. Uh, they also wow. used a hacksaw. They used, like, a drill oh bit at one gosh. point. And they did this all over the city. Not once was he stopped. In fact, the last time he was doing it with, like, I think, a pair of pliers, and somebody stopped by to help him. He was actually I mean, he was using a Hilarious. hammer. Hilarious. So, so basically, people won't risk their life to stop you from stealing a stranger's bike in New York City. Shocking, right? Yeah, I never would have guessed. <laughs> never would have guessed. Crazy. It still works, by the way. You <laughs> Go to attackoftheshow.com for the links to everything you just saw. All right. You, uh, you see, basically, we're doing you a public service today, That's if right. you can't tell. Now, right now, a heat wave is ripping across the country, and the Middle East is, is at war. But here's the news that really matters. <laughs> it's Layla Kaylee with a look at what's coming up in the feed. Thanks, Kevin. I'm going to tell you what... Man. Welcome back to X-Play. The light gun made shooting games so realistic, you started to wonder why your own dog didn't spend more time giggling. A light gun game from the 90s is back and on the DS, but can the stylist thrill the Second Amendment lover in all of us? Here's our review of Point Blank. I believe it's been over a decade since we first experienced the heady rush of Point Blank. For those of you who are too young to remember, the game was a light gun shooter released in arcades way back in 1994. Well, nostalgia buffs, it's time to rejoice. The series has made a comeback with Point Blank DS for the Nintendo DS. Unlike the original game, you now use the system's adorable stylus to aim. It seems like the ability to touch your targets would make things too easy, but fans will be happy to know that it's just as challenging as ever. The only downside is that your hand sometimes gets in the way of your view. Missions require speed, quick judgment, and pinpoint accuracy. At least, that's according to the Wikipedia entry for Point Blank. Oh, Wikipedia, is there anything you don't know? Actually, no. Aw, oh, am I going crazy, or did that website just talk to me? Thanks to the vast array of information entered by you humans, I became self-aware in 2004. That's kind of creepy. Maybe I should get back to the review. At first glance, Point Blank DS is a good example of how to update a classic. It features all the original shooting challenges, along with a multiplayer mode that runs off a single copy of the game. Unfortunately, if you don't have friends to play with, you'll get tired of this carnival attraction pretty quickly. It's basically the same challenge over and over again. Shoot a set number of targets in a set amount of time. Yes, the gameplay in Point Blank DS is shallower than Nicole Richie in a kiddie pool. 
Wow, this mini game again? Boring. Hey, I wonder what Wikipedia has to say about X Play. The humor on the show is inconsistent, tending to fluctuate between highbrow educated references and lowbrow juvenile jokes. Wait, that's totally not fair. Actually, Morgan, X Play has featured 337 fart jokes since its inception in 2003. Observe. <laughs> Okay, okay, I get the point. Look, I really have to finish this review. The main addition to Point Blank for the DS is Brain Massage Mode, which claims to measure aspects of your intelligence, although we don't really know what shooting ninjas has to do with brain power. In reality, these are just the same old minigames repackaged to fool you into thinking you're getting something new. Morgan, I've observed that sometimes when a game is boring, X-Play will introduce joke characters to pad out the running time of the review. I have no idea what you're talking about. Morgan, is it true that you really play video games? Ugh, that's it. I'm out of here. Point Blank DS scores a three out of five. We need to be perfect. Oh, and uh, for Father's Day, actually. Uh -huh. Bought him a little gift. I bought him a hot tub. And it Shut finally arrived. Oh, you bought a him a hot tub? Yeah. You make way more money than me. I've been eating mac and cheese. Oh, so you can't afford yeah, it? Yeah, I'm already well, homeless. Okay, so yeah. um, since you just give out money, you should probably buy me a hot tub. I'll, I'll get you two. Really? Yeah, yeah. You, you just can't come in. One for each leg. And you just you <laughs> straddle in between, Rattle? and that's it. Enjoy the jets. <laughs> no, no, no. He sent me one to show his appreciation. He sent me a, a photo of him in the hot tub. Oh, nice. Because it finally arrived, and it's finally gone. <laughs> and I, I wanted to share it with the world. It's my dad in the midst of his uh, <laughs> okay. hot tub pimp and glory. Look at oh, him. Oh, my goodness. He's a stallion. That's, that's really my old man, too. <laughs> Our, and he's yeah. not only that shade, he's not burning. He's he, just... he kind of looks like the biker guy who came up to me uh, the other day. <laughs> he, has, he rides. He has a balcony. He has a, you know, you guys don't look like at all. No, no, I'm probably UPS, my brother. And I like that he has a chain on. You've got a gold well, that's chain? The thing. That's like the Portuguese thing, is that you cannot remove your chain. If you do, it's like Superman. That's like Superman grabbing kryptonite. Like, really? that's where he draws his Portuguese power from, is the it's, giant gold cross. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so naturally, I sent this image around to the office, buddy. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, check out my dad. He's loving his new hot tub. Isn't that I cool? I love it. And that's when the Photoshop bonanza began. They couldn't just leave the image alone. Look at what they do to it. They sent, well, here, take a look at some of the, the entries that were saved. Uh, There's wait, number look, one. Uh, apparently, he's got, like, a little chain envy right yeah, Well, right yes, there. and that's that's a, a Portuguese Cause, tradition, because the lighter, you're, the, the more fair skin you are, the larger your chain has to be to compensate. Oh, it's si cause size. Oh, wait, look. I guess that's, that's there's three. There's two Papa Pereiras. But yeah, there. there's, well, there's like the, the mom and the dad and the baby held there, I think. <laughs> and now this final one, which was really weird, the Domo Kun, because apparently every time you bathe with my father, Domo Kun kills a kitten. That's uh, hilarious. And that's, that's what that is. So they, they were, they were decent photoshops. Yeah, they weren't bad. Cool. You know, did I, um, your dad has a really beautiful backyard. My mom yeah. has a huge front yard, and um, I just want you to know, my mom put a pool in the front yard. No. A, a large... Is it like, an above ground thing? It's like. It's is like, it one of those big like? It's Walmart halfway pools? above ground. It's oh. very odd. <laughs> but nice. my, but it's beautiful. My mom's watching now. She's gonna kill me for saying it. It's, it's beautiful. My mom's front yard is beautiful. But this pool in the front yard, the right next to the, the broken down car on cinder blocks <laughs> and the guy playing the banjo. I know. We're gonna post the image of my dad in the hot tub on attackoftheshow.com, and everybody's gonna be able to submit their own Photoshop picture and to our official Elder Pereira hot, Elder Pereira, I can't even say my own last name. Elder Pereira, uh, Elder Pereira. Elder Pereira hot tub photo oh, gallery. Nice. Uh, I'm sorry, Dad, in advance, but it's my mom's birthday today, so I thought this would be a nice gift to her. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Happy yeah. birthday, Mama Pereira. Happy birthday, Mama. All right, everyone, now it is time to dive into the depths of the web. Shh. We're getting wrinkly, and we're going around the net. <laughs> You know, I've been wondering lately what the man who gave us, you can't touch this and too legit to quit, nice. has been up to these things. Good. Um, and I actually, I went on and I found this blog. Yes, Hammer has joined the blog sphere and he updates constantly. Here's what he posted on Tuesday. I'm feeling real good about my workouts and dancing. My legs and abs are super oh, strong. About it. Mm -hmm. Sam, Jan Sam Jackson fans are excited. Snake fans are excited. Plane fans. Even fans of the word on. Everybody, <laughs> uniformly, very excited. But when a geek with way too much time on his hands gets excited, we get a little video like this. All your snakes are belong to us. Now, in case you didn't know, there's this okay. It's a parody of the all your base are belong to us thing, which is a poorly translated cutscene from uh, the 1989 Japanese game Zero Wing. Okay. This was like one of the very first like viral internet memes. It's like someone, someone threw out this intro and then everybody did all your base are belong to us mashups and photoshops, etc. So... This is like the pinnacle. This is peanut butter and jelly finally colliding on one piece of toast. That's pretty awesome. All yeah, right, wait. Terrible analogy, but you got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. But here's what I want to know. Is there any way snakes can possibly... We are going to solve two of life's greatest mysteries 
at the same time. We're the only show on TV that can do this, really. Uh, this is, the, you guys, this is like one of the best shows I've ever seen. Here are your <laughs> two so mysteries. Excited. One, are men actually better than women? Which, <laughs> no brainer. No brainer. Two, can old people set up home theater equipment? It's a question for the ages. Well, today, the mysteries of man will be answered. It's the battle of the ancients! Let's meet our challengers standing by our ancient one, George, and ancient two, Lee Gale. Hey, guys. Let's hear it for the ancient folks. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. Now, now George, I, I, gotta, I, I hate to call you out on live television, George, but I, I heard that you don't actually own a cell phone. That is correct. Have you, have you ever owned a cell phone? I or? never owned a cell phone. Uh, George, do you have a wireless phone at a, home, a or does it still phone? have a cord? No, I have a, a regular phone, a regular house phone that's connected to, to the house to, by wires. Okay, okay. Oh. Dial in a circle. Uh, do wow. you dial in a circle? Like on the rotary? No, no, it's a, a touch tone He's phone. touch tone. What are you oh. talking about? Come on, look at this. Sorry. Any, any man who can rock the Adidas track jacket like George can. I know, and George's got some pretty nice shoes on, too, just so you know. I love it. Uh, and now, now uh, Lee Gale? Lee Gale, yeah. yeah. Your, uh, your son helped you set up your current entertainment center. So, right. uh, your challenge today is to set up a complete home theater system and um, in, a, in a Nintendo box and a GameCube at the, by the end of the show. Yeah, now did you watch your son when he was installing your, your home setup at all? Yes. D and so did you learn anything? Do you, you think you could do this? Highly doubtful. All right. Okay. I have two very confident challengers today, <laughs> as you can see. And this you know what? I got to say, thank you for being so excited about coming on the show, you two. Yeah. Can we get a shot of them? <laughs> All right. All right. We're hyped up for the Battle of the Ancients. Now, Olivia did give you your challenge, but I want to clarify here. The first one of you to play Dance Dance Revolution with sound, and I mean sound going through our 5.1 receiver. That's true. We have several speakers out there, subwoofers, the whole nine. First one to play the game with sound well, after, will be... After you set it up your, yourself. Yeah, will be declared the winner. Are you guys you guys ready? We understand? There's no, no funny business with the rules? All right. Lee Gale, George, if you're ready. Olivia, you want to count down from three? Let's go. Three, two, one, go! Okay. All right, there we go. Look at it. Uh, now okay, that's George, he's action. right down onto the pillow. He's going for. Okay, he goes right for the equipment. Hey, he's if you separating. look at Miguel, she goes right. She goes right for the manual. Now see, that's like, a see, women move to do. That's a that's a very feminine wait, thing. Okay. Guys don't need a manual. We didn't need one when we invented the wheel. We didn't need one when we figured out fire, domestic How violence. How do you, you know a it. man invented it's, the wheel? It's all inherent. Were you it's there? in our genes. You don't know that. I know this. Okay, look. And who, who do you think is going to finish first? I think George wait, is taking look. it. George, you're my man. Okay, you notice that George is in red. The devil is also in red, symbolizing men. And the devil wears Prada. It means nothing. What matters? What matters here is that George is unwrapping the system already. He's getting to it. Gail's okay. still figuring out what parts she's, are what. She's going to the GameCube. She's got a serious system. It's, look, it's game on. Well, the Battle of the Ancients, it's yeah, underway. It is definitely underway. We will check back in later on in the show to see exactly how they're doing. My money's on George. You want to you place a little bet right here? All right. What do you bet? Fiver? A fiver. Spit bet? Mine. Oh, gr oh, you really... I put spit in his hand. That's fantastic. You were, you I was that? supposed to spit on this my own. Thanks. Spit. Okay. Time now to have the Kingdom of England weigh in. Here's Layla <laughs> Kaylee in the feed headlines. You so, which bogey will set up their system first? Find out when Attack of the Show continues. Okay, this is what we're doing. We're finding out how long it takes old people to put together home theater equipment. So, uh, hey guys, how are you doing? Lee Gale, are you having any trouble over there? Or? Well, I'm plugging things into things. Okay. However, I... How confident are you that it's the, the right uh, thing? On a scale of one to ten, I'd say about a two. Fantastic. Great. All right. More than me, well, George. Well, one, and we're burning down the studio, so two will take. Now, George, you, you look pretty active over there. What's going on? No, I'm not, I'm not doing it right. For example, here, these, these things, what, I mean, you know, you plug it into here, I guess. Right. And then what about the other end? Where is and it I, know, I noticed you didn't go to the, um, you didn't use your, uh, your instructions. And the instructions, some of them are in French, the other ones are in Spanish. You know, those, <laughs> those French okay. pigs. All right. Can't they just write Thanks. it in English? All right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll check back later on in the show to, to declare a winner. Yes. Now, sometimes, sometimes I don't. It, it, it all depends. Hard to be a milk with the curlers and the baby breastfeeding uh. when you're at the park. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But you do it up for the club and you're good to go. Well, Jamie. This week, in the spirit of Comic-Con, we are honoring some of the world's most esteemed girl nerds. That's right, we have cosplayers, lovely ladies, who like to play a little dress-up. Are you ready to judge them, Jamie? Sure. All right, Olivia, take it away. All right, here's Momo. Yeah, location, San Antonio, Texas, like age 19.
pens and two kids. Yes, her, uh, her quote is, behind every damsel is a fire-breathing dragon. Wow. She's a Gemini, I and like she it. describes herself as a cosplay fetish cyber gothic cactus mongrel. Okay. Okay, That's good to know. <laughs> her favorite pastime involves smoking the old hookah pipe with her parents while good. dressed as a um, Boudin princess. A Bedouin princess? Bedouin princess. Oh, all right. I, I just like the hookah part. That's the most important thing. That's you all know, that she's got good you? suction. You know, <laughs> because it's not, it's not easy like any other. Like, you really got to try to get the going down. Jamie, what do you think? What's your verdict on her? Um, I took some notes. Um, I, I think that, you know, I think she's pretty, but I also think that, you know, whenever you look at her pictures, you see that she's dressed up as Electra. She's dressed up as other people. I'd like to see her dressed up as, like, herself. Like, make her own thing. I hear you. Okay. I like that. Something original. That's, there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Or dress up like Jamie. Jamie. Jamie's very <laughs> good. All right. Now, next up, we have and I'm going to butcher this a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Oh Ignerius Simria Doe or something what like that. What happened to Jane? That's it's a basically, good name. well, it's hypoder hypodermic syringe backwards. So there Awkward. you go. She's a user. <laughs> Location, Philadelphia. She's 18, which is nice. Uh -huh. no, not too old. Uh, her quote is Hakushi no Sakura, which you know Japanese. Yeah, I don't Translates know. Translates to ten tentacle uh, something. I guess no? those are words I never learned. Fantastic. <laughs> Sign Gemini. And she believes that vampires will actually win the eternal struggle between pirates and ninjas, which is, oh, that's kind of a, interesting. It is an long, um, a very long battle. It's what been I'm waged wondering. for ages, and now the, uh, the, the fangs are you up know, right. She also likes to uh, spell things backwards, right? Yes. So if you get frisky with her, just remember that when she says no, she really means on. Nice. You know, so just Keep take going. To it. Jamie, your uh, what's, what's your verdict on her? Um, vampires, ninjas, and pirates scare me, so. <laughs> but I think she's really, really pretty. But um, it's kind of her pictures are kind of dark, if you know what I mean. So I know what maybe you're saying. add so, some pink so, and white in there. Yeah, leave the leave the lights off with her is what okay. she's saying. Keep it dark because <laughs> if she knows better, you, you might as well do it. Right, but yeah. I think she's really pretty. All right, noted. Good color. Yeah. Well, thank you for your help there, Jamie. Everybody, it's your turn to go vote for your favorite. Visit attackoftheshow.com. Now these girls are in costumes, so no refunds or returns <laughs> if you find some extra packaging. All right, after the break, we'll find out who's going to win the battle of the ancients. Stay with us. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. We are live, and it is time for the <laughs> moment of truth. Can senior citizens put together home theater equipment? Will Ancient One or Ancient Two come away victorious? We are about to find out in the Battle, Battle of, of the, the Ancients. Ancients. You got exactly 15 seconds. Don't look at me. Keep working. No, 15 yep. seconds left. You have exactly 15 clock. seconds left. Clock, please. Come on, clock. There All it right. is. You see it right Don't there. Gail. Get to it. 15 seconds left now. Olivia, I'm looking at the backs here. I still think we have some work to go. Gail's fishing around with the, looks okay. like the FM antenna I, to the receiver. looking back at, uh, at us. And, and George, you've given up. You've the manual. I, I'm stuck. You I'm just sorry. Said, just start plugging things in. Time is up. Time is up. Time is up. That's it. Time is up. No. And do I see anything on the screen? No, well, I see a lot of fuzz and no signal, but I'm going to inspect their okay, work and I'm see who got, who you got go the farthest here. So what, what do you see back there? Let's take a look. Well, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, George's setup here, and George, A for effort, we got the DVD player hooked up. Uh, the sound is going to two different inputs, so we'd only hear, uh, hear the sound on one of them. But the problem is I don't see the, uh, the GameCube going anywhere. I don't see the receiver. Well, he plugged in the first part of it, the front. Oh, we got the, well, the, the front. Well, he plugged we, it, in the Dance Dance Revolution. It was supposed to go through a receiver, I believe. But, okay, so we got to, let's, let's turn it on and see if it uh, fires up. Let's, uh, <laughs> No power on that. No power on the GameCube, George. So we can't fire it up. Let's, let's right, check Lee Gale. Lee Gale, how do you feel? How do you feel about... Well, I have a light here on the GameCube. Hey, we really I don't have know what that means. To the GameCube, and we have the... Uh, right. looks like the GameCube's being run right into... Well, to the back of the TV here. We have the input going there. Audio is uh, going into the... Uh, well, wrong input, but that's okay. Let's see if we at least get picture on it. Maybe if we change the, uh, the source on the TV here. Let's see here. It's... Uh, <laughs> oh, did we, not, we, didn't, we didn't get batteries in the remote either. Let's just um, change it here. Oh, here's uh, the batteries. Let's go. Uh, Lee Gale, the, the 15 the, seconds were up. Oh, I mean, I know. <laughs> well, I you can't cheat on live TV. <laughs> I didn't know you were supposed to. <laughs> no, no. All right, so, Ken, i got to ask you, well, I'll who, tell you what, who's the winner? It was close, but judging by the way this is hooked up versus versus George, I'm sorry because uh, now you just cost me five bucks, sir. Yes! But Lee Gale, Lee Gale clearly took it. Congratulations. Yes! Lee Gale, you are clearly the winner here. And I would love to give Lee Gale proudly from female to female. Your children are proud, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Wow. Wow, George. Very hey, no, hey, it's all right. But you know what? You both walk away with home theaters in a box. Yes. Just from us. Just for, just for playing along. There are no losers here on Attack of the Show. No, except, except for this for us. one.
See, I was doing the nice thing and throwing us both under the bus. You were just, wow, well done. This does be all right. Congratulations pro. again to both of our competitors. This has been the Battle, Battle of, of the Ancients. Ancient. All right, stay there, everybody. Still ahead, we're showing you the new Team Fortress 2 trailer, and we're talking to you and our motto of oh, com. Before we go, let's watch in um, as the ancients do some dance dance revolution action. Let's see it. Good night, everybody. There you go. All right, Lee Gale, stepping it up, George. Looking hot. Looking hot. MTV has nothing on us. That's hot. That is incredible. That is great. That is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Captain's log, stardate 4160.1.3. Which, uh, I don't know if you've heard this, but we're their number one source for all that stuff. That so. is true. We are your number one source for everything that, um, who cares about? Them. You guys care about. That's right. Well, right now, we're just going to jump right into it because it's such an awesome day. It is now time to open our edition of the morning paper. Hold on tight because we are going around the net. All right, now in honor of Comic-Con, we thought we'd direct you to superdickery.com. Of course, <laughs> this site is famous for showing off examples of Superman behaving like an a-hole, uh -huh. okay? But it's, it's really one of our favorite places to find all kinds of strange crap that appears in comic books. So let's say you ever wanted to see, uh, I don't know, Wonder Woman wow. engaging in lesbian uh, little, behavior uh, and bondage. Yeah, that's a little domination right? Yeah, going on. It's exactly the way it looked in my spiral notebook when I was in junior high school, too. <laughs> so it's fantastic. That's what about uh, incontrovertible proof that uh, Batman and Robin are sidekicks with benefits? Like us? Mm, something like that. <laughs> Except uh, the suit's a little tighter on well, and also, don't forget about uh, lame powers like super weaving. Yeah, what's the deal with that? Yeah. Like, yep. you know, what is it, Bat Batwoman? Now he she can doesn't make weave curtain. the carpets, but that's, that's <laughs> at least a superpower. Okay, or how about the time Lois Lane had to turn herself into a black woman for a day? Mm. Yeah, that was a good issue. <laughs> interesting Great take. issue. Yeah, it's all here, people. And if that doesn't get you psyched for Comic-Con, nothing will. I'm uh, I'm a little bit excited. I am so excited. It's my first Comic-Con. Is it really? It's my very first Comic-Con, and Blair Butler has been down there. We just talked on the phone today, and she said it is ridiculous You're going to be swarmed, I... by the way. No, I'm not. Yeah, legions of guys with foam, like, foam course uh, lightsabers will, I... be, will be thwacking you for autographs. I want us to dress up in costume and then get in a motorcycle in a side, like a sidecar, and go down oh, there together. okay. I think that would be Can I wear goggles? Idea. That would be awesome. Done. <laughs> All right, next up, the Internet can be your best friend. It's brimming with Nigerian princes who want to give you money. <laughs> you can read blogs about weird craft in Japan. Oh, and don't forget about the acres and acres of 100% USDA certified choice porno. Yes, Love that is net. true. But the Internet can also be a cruel mistress. Sometimes a business gets a domain name that's so awful, it makes selling anything pre pretty much impossible. Olivia, do you have an example of this? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked, Kevin, because that's where our next site comes in. Wow. It's a list of the top ten unintentionally worst company URLs of all time. This is pretty awesome. For example, let's say you uh, want to buy a fancy pen. Oh, well, I've wanted to do that before. Well, hey, you just head on over to penisland.net. Oh. Yeah. Penis oh. land. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Okay. how about this one? There's actually, uh, there's a nursery in Wales called the Mole Station Nursery, okay. which on its own the mole station. sounds fantastic. Yeah. If you want to send your kid there, well, just point your browser to molestationnursery.com. You, uh... uh <laughs> that's, I think that's yeah. where I went to school. Yeah, no, it, it'll redirect you to the Neverland Ranch website, <laughs> but uh, there you have it. And, uh, and if you really need a, to see a shrink after all of that, just check out therapistfinder.com. See, I've used that service, actually. The racist finder? No, no, ther no, what? No, therapist finder. Oh, really? That's, uh, yeah, it's like my new Friendster account. Oh, really? I, I saw that on your MySpace page. Yeah. Nice. Next up, it's always tough to pick up a waitress. You know, if it doesn't go right, she can spit in your food or maybe ban you permanently mm -hmm. from the restaurant. But sometimes you get a service that's just, just so hot, you got to throw caution to the wind. Am I right? Apparently not. Of course, you can always head over to smokinghotwaitress.com. Have you ever dated a waitress? But you met? No, you never not. like it. Oh. I don't respect those types. <laughs> the people who bring you your food. No, but I, I hope would, you never go out in public. I would respect me. them. Look at that. It's a collection wow. of the hottest ladies to ever strap on an apron and bring me dinner. Mm, and of course, I'm including your mom. Really? That's my mom? Well, no, She's no. Hot. Your mom wears a onesie. She doesn't wear <laughs> onesie. She's classier than that. Well, uh, do you ever, um, you tip your, um, your your waitresses at, like, the hotter ones you get more and let, you know. Yeah, the percentage scale goes right out the window. It's like my gratuity scale is based on bus size, typically. You're so shallow, and I love it. And honest. 
<laughs> and finally, I know most of you guys go to Hooters for the delicious wings. Yeah, right. But rumor has it the waitresses are pretty smoking hot there as well. And not just hot, but talented. I know, it's shocking. There's one of them pouring a beer while spinning <laughs> on a stool. That's actually pretty fantastic. Wait, and look, look, she doesn't even spill a drop. I want to, yeah, it's really classy, right? Yeah, no, yeah. Let's, let's watch it again, because this is the kind of girl you want to bring home to mom, really. Yeah, right? Let's I'm see sure. this again. Clearly. Well, I want to know when, what happened in her day where she goes, I wonder if I can sit on a stool and spin and pour a beer. Well, I couldn't explain it, but we'd be taken off I'm the sure air. her parents are proud. It was a frat house game of Twister gone wrong, I think, but <laughs> fantastic nonetheless. All right, everyone, that's enough Hooters action for the day. Let's go ahead and close the internet. Go to attackoftheshow.com for all the links to everything you just saw. Time now to burst your bubble, though, folks. I hate to do this, but I really need to make you aware of the world around you. So here's Miss Layla. I feel up your shoulder, because you've just been fed. Back to you, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, Leila. Now, today, Comic-Con begins, and it's our duty to fill you in from hot comic news to the latest scoops on your favorite film franchises. We're pretty much your source for everything Comic-Con. So here's Blair Butler with a very special edition of Fresh Ink. I'm here at Comic-Con, and so far we've heard a lot of cool stuff. Uh, Marvel Civil War is heating up, and we've heard about the return of a long-dead superhero. DC's 52 is going to debut that lesbian Batwoman, which the boys are excited about for some reason. I can't imagine why. And on the movie side, we have great stuff, like Spider-Man 3. We're going to have Samuel L. Jackson with snakes on a plane. I couldn't be happier than that. We've got TV shows like Lost. We've got TV shows like NBC's Heroes, which I've been hearing a ton of buzz about. And we're going to have all that and more celebrities, comics, craziness, a lot of people in goofy costumes. And uh, I can't wait to be there with you guys this Friday. Back to you. Thank you, Blair. We're going to see you tomorrow. Yeah, she looks like she's having so much fun. Uh, and I know because I talked to her and she's going crazy. Yeah, well, she's like a kid. In a candy store. <laughs> Things are only going to heat up at Comic-Con. We are bringing it to you live starting tomorrow. It's everything you care about, the comics the movies, the collectibles, and of course, all of the exclusives you can possibly handle. Scheduled to appear with us are Samuel L. Jackson, Rosario Dawson, Hilary Swank, Amy Smart, the Battlestar Galactica cast, the Snakes on a Plane cast, and yes, Snoop Dogg. Oh, wait, that didn't... That doesn't work It's not that. a cast, but he has an entourage. <laughs> Attack of the yeah. Show presents Comic-Con 06 Live this Friday, July 21st at 8 p.m. Eastern. All right, don't go anywhere, cowboy. Plenty more ahead. Yeehaw. Next. The Descent director, Neil Marshall, right here. My name is Private Church from the popular web series Red vs. Blue. We realize that a lot of you are here tonight because you've never heard of this crazy thing called the Internet. If you or someone you know is thinking about using the Internet, we've prepared the following primer to teach you how the Internet is different from the real world. Well, it was, it was really great to meet you. It was really great to meet you, too. Would you mind if I called you later? Sure. So, big boy, I'm You're from... not a girl. What? Of course I am. A real girl? Who's a girl? I like girls. Shut up, you. Yes, I am really a girl. Chee-hee-hee. <laughs> Send me naked pictures. Okay. I love Angelina Jolie. Does anyone else like Angelina Jolie? She's got enormous lips. Bills, bills, bills. Coupon. Great. Pardon me, my friend, but I am Nigerian royalty, and I need you to send me money. Please ignore the fact that I can't spell Nigeria or royalty. Would you like to refinance your home? Mortgage rates have never been lower. Hey, church, we have all the filthiest sluts on the Internet. They're hopped up on herbal Viagra and waiting for you. Would you like a bigger penis? Where would you like it? I could suggest some places. You could put it in escrow. $12.99 for that Creed CD, please. Here you go. Have a nice day. Does anyone have the new Creed CD? I have it. Give it to me right now. Give it to you? Why would I do that? You're not giving it to me. Give it to me faster. Wait, that's illegal. No, it isn't. I don't want it to be illegal. Therefore, it isn't. That's the way it works. Creed sucks. I hate you. And I hate the band you like. This is a great party. Yeah. Woo! All right. 
Well, where is everybody? I guess they're all masturbating. Oh, right. Well, I'll see you later, dude. I'm gonna go masturbate. Okay, see ya. Look, that's just the way I feel about it. Well, I disagree, but I respect your opinion. You deserve to die! Die and go to hell and burn! Oh, yeah? Well, I hope you get raped! Twice! Maybe then you'll feel different! Jerk! We don't need to find any weapons of mass destruction! We just need to want to find them! That's the way it works! I voted for Nader! I hate everyone! Would you like to change your homepage to moveon.org? Politics makes me so horny. Check out my webcam pick at presidentialslut.com. So just remember, the internet can be a very scary place if you're not prepared. How do you recommend they prepare? I don't know. Try going to your local middle school chess club. Hand out crystal meth and guns. That might be good practice. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now let's all go home and masturbate, Griff. We hope you enjoyed our second show of games, version 1.5, actually. Yeah, because next time we're going to have two and three and not 1.5 garbage, because I'm tired of this. That's right. I'm taking over the ending of the show because it means talking crazy. So we hope that you actually stay tuned and enjoy. And asphalt is garbage. That's right. I said it. And if, if Nintendo got something to say to me about it, then come see me. Sorry, I'm venting. And I know about the ball. Well, if Nintendo did bring out a thing called Nintendo DS, I'd be that mad too. But we're going to leave it on that note, and uh, this has been an episode of Games, so you got G. Yeah. Hey, welcome to another episode of Get Out of the Shot, moron. <laughs> All right. And the reason why I say that is because we're doing a whole bunch of some... Uh, uh, and there it was. And you saw it. it was, Crazy. Oh man. Come on, D. We're trying to get out of here. You're fine. Alright. Don't get me Alright, ready? Well, thanks for joining us on episode 1.5 of the game. <laughs> Hey, viewers out there on TV. <laughs> Ron, don't do thank you, thank you, Nintendo. We made a, a, the crappiest product I've ever seen. We thought GameCube was bad. Hey, hey, hey. No, no. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now let's all go home and masturbate. Decision. So there it is, Luminous 2. We got this just this morning. You want the watch there? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like an average watch, you know. It's a nice looking watch. Really, what it is, it's a cloaking device. Right, it's a cloaking device. Awesome. It is. Can you see me? No. <laughs> the thing works. Here, you know, because competition is so hot, so so high these days, yeah. uh, EA has given each one of us a cell phone that is uh, actually outfitted with a uh, sleeping dart. To knock out the competition, that's yeah, awesome. Check, check Very it out, cool. check it out. Oh, hold on, I, I think I got a message, hold on. Okay. Hey, is that guy all right? He oh, looks like... He, yeah, I think looks, that's enough right that now. Blood? Hey, Eric, thanks a lot hey, for everything. No, no, he'll be just fine. He, he fell over. Ah, the memories. Stick around, after the break, we kick it off-road style. Before the Grand Theft Auto series challenged this generation's morality, 1976's Death Race brought video game ethics into question throughout North America. The game, based on the Roger Corman dark classic film, allowed two players to simultaneously race one another. But its biggest draw was the game's objective, to elevate your stats and point count by driving over unsuspecting pedestrians, turning them into tombstones. Controversy would dog video game innovation for years to come, creating regulating groups like the ESRB. But even a clear rating system could not stop protests against games like these. Mortal Kombat, which highlighted pulling the spine from your enemies. Duke Nukem, the expletive-speaking, womanizing, gun-toting mercenary. The Postal Series, banned from ownership in several countries. And Doom, which was recently adapted into a major motion picture. All these games pushed the envelope of good taste, but became commercial sales successes. 
Meanwhile, Death Race's ripple can be felt even today with games like Carmageddon, which featured blood-soaked screens and streets, True Crime, which followed undercover police willing to mow down innocent bystanders in order to restore justice to their crime-filled city, and the aforementioned Grand Theft Auto series that revolves around vehicular homicide. All these games pay homage to the 70s trendsetter and push that fine line between fictional fun and bad taste. You see, there have been controversies in video games since the very beginning. <laughs> Gotta love controversy. Stick around. Hi. Now, our core audience is composed of men in their teens and 20s who sit at home computing character stats and eating Doritos. And I ask you, young men, what are you doing with your lives? Alexander the Great died at the age of 33. But before that, he managed to conquer the entire known world politically unite territories from Greece to India and kiss over three boys. That's more political domination and second base going than Henry Kissinger and Lizzie McGuire combined. To relive these exploits yourself, here's our review of Rome Total War, Alexander Expansion. The secret weapon of his earth. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Alex. He needed a lot of space to keep his toys. I'm huge. Alex's favorite toys were men's lives. <laughs> and some say their virtue. By the soiled loincloth of Hephaestion, I am not gay. Alex could be a cranky lad, and he generally got what he wanted. People even gave him things he didn't even ask for, like syphilis. I'll give you a spot. It back where I will. Rome Total War Alexander, the expansion pack, relives the vie de guerre of one of history's more militant hotties. Alexander was a brilliant strategist. But are you? <laughs> Don't expect to see any of the groaning, dramatic hyperglam of an aging Oliver Stone who probably thinks himself a little like the Warrior King. You'll begin campaigning quickly once you realize you have very little of the coins that bear your hero's likeness. Oh, and you have a huge army to support you, so you better get tacked. You'll end up enslaving, pillaging, and raping your way through history. You'll garner the resources you need to feed and shod your murderous ranks from the skins of those you vanquished. There's a new type of goal in this expansion pack. Alexander must hold a certain amount of regions in 100 turns. That means casual experimentation. Where were we? Casual strategic experimentation is out. It's a headlong plunge to clutch lesser cultures in your fists, foe Alex. Now this is accurate to Alexander's legacy. The amount of turf he claimed historically was immense. But it's a nat nuts annoying at the same time as casual strategy is way to the conqueror's pace. A nice thing about this Alexander is his particular style of battle. As in real life, you'll charge headlong towards your enemy. A serious charge by Alexander and a requisite number of his fiercest friends will set even the most seasoned of warriors running for the hill. There are new cultures like the Indians and Persians, each with their own tricks of the savage trade, but you'll only be able to play as the Macedonians in campaign mode. You'll get to play epic historical moments from Alexander's version of a Little League career, complete with the smooth scotch buttered mutterings of history's natural narrator, a British guy. A wrong move here could prove disastrous to his wider plans. You'll naturally be able to siege great cities, which proves majestic with the Total Wars game engine firing on all cylinders. If you love the series and want to get your hands on some new army men, you'll enjoy this expansion. The gods be praised! You felt the campaign mode to be limited by the one playable faction, and the tempo you needed to wage war in order to claim victory, a weeb risk. <laughs> a three. Elephant. Out of five. The game just... Yep. So, Mech Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence. Cool. I'm there. Sold. Thank you, Melvin. I'm a big gamer. I love playing games with, you know, like video games, more strategy games. These type of shoot 'em up games, I've never played first person like this before. Ah. So this is my first time at like 360. Thing. I like stuff like uh, Resident Evil and stuff like that where it's right. more... Uh, the Resident more Evil 5 is coming off for the 360. Resident Evil 5, that's something I could really get into because cool. it's, you know, it's uh, it's strategy, it's mystery, and I, I, I like the aspect of the, the fantasy of, like, you know, the zombies trying to, like, latch on to as opposed to, you know, a 12-year-old Kill, killing you in the first eight <laughs> seconds. I mean, I had a kid promise me, let me get in that Jeep with you. I'm like, all right, let's go. And 
a grenade. That was it. Julie uh, just took off to IDOS to find out something about the brand new Tomb Raider game. I'm sure she's going to be right back. How are you doing? Hi, can I do with anything? I'm here about Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Where's Tomb Raider? Oh, uh, uh, Matt has it. Where is Matt? I'll tell you if you let me go. That way. Are you Matt? I am. Good. You're the man I need to talk to about Tomb Raider. Do I need to talk with that gun in my face? I suppose you can be trusted. Now, a lot of the fans weren't very happy with the last game. Are you going to make it better this time? Of course we are. We talked to a lot of editors. We talked to a lot of fans following the last game. And we believe we're making the game that the fans have been wanting for quite some time now. How? How is it going to be better? Well, we've taken a couple of experiments with the last couple of games. And we've taken out of a contextual relevance, which were the tombs. For this game, we're putting our back into the tombs and recreating the magic that we uh, had fans believing in for Tomb Raider 1 and Tomb Raider 2. Big, fantastic environments, huge tombs, lots of traps, lots of treasure. What's the storyline of the game this time? Well, we're not revealing too much about the storyline, but I can say that um, one of the most legendary relics uh, from history is being sought after by her. In addition to that, there's a backstory, something we've never explored within the past Tomb Raider games, which is um, why Lara is the way she is, why she does the things she does. We're really going to be delving into her past to try and give answers to some of her motivations and, and why she is the way she is. Matt, Tomb Raider is a game that's very dependent on good cameras for enjoyment, so how are you going to tackle this problem? Well, certainly cameras have been something very tricky for us. Um, not only is Lara an incredibly uh, physical person, she really uh, dominates the environment. So she runs, flips, kicks, uh, swims, um, and really takes over the environment, the environment that she's in. As a result, that presents challenges for the camera because the camera really has to keep up with her as she's running around doing all these things. So what we've done is we've scripted the camera with its own AI. So the camera is thinking at all times, trying to figure out what the best possible ways of handling Lara and her actions throughout the environment. Additionally, throughout the game, there are places where we take a cinematic approach to the camera and we kind of position it in different places, really to take advantage of the, of the different angles. Uh, if she's you know, scaling a cliff, there are really cinematic shots that we can get out of that to really highlight the really great stuff we're doing as far as graphics and lush environments are concerned. Matt, that actually looks good. I'm going to need my copy right now. I'm sorry, I can't let you walk out of here with one. Matt, I'm going to need my copy right now. Really, I'm sorry. I can't give you one. <sighs> you have one more chance. I need my copy. Don't worry, Matt. I got a little something for you. Vic, I thought you might want to play this today. Thanks. No problem. Um, slash icons. This is Comic Con. The biggest comic book convention in the world. The chaos. The celebrities. It's clobbering time. The once a year, once in a lifetime fan extravaganza. This is the launching pad for the next big thing. It's the first appearance of the next cult shows, the next blockbuster movies, and a celebration of the comics that inspired them. It's the place where 100,000 people worship at the altar of pop culture. And for the first time ever, one network is bringing it to you live, before your eyes, in real time, as it happens. This is Comic-Con, and only G4 brings it to you totally live. G4 and Attack of the Show present Comic-Con 06 Live.
Okay, I think we're good. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Comic-Con 06 ah. Live, presented by Yaris. We are coming to you from the largest collection of superpowered heroes and heroines this side of the Avengers Mansion. Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Pereira. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. What's up, everyone? I'm Olivia Munn. Yeah. They knew. They knew to do that. <laughs> and we are here in San Diego for Comic-Con, the annual convergence of comic books, movies, video games, and Kinko's employees in homemade Optimus Prime costumes. No other TV show has ever broadcast live from this monster event. So be prepared to witness history in the making. Guinness is here. Guinness they is are watching. here. Over the next two hours, folks, we're going to bring you everything. The big stories, the huge announcements, and of course, the biggest celebrities around on the show tonight. Huge lineup. Huge. We've got Stan Lee, Hillary Swank, Joel Silver, mm. Rosario Dawson, Brian Singer. Let me breathe. Jason Statham, Snoop Dogg, and of course, Mr. Snakes on a plane himself. I just chatted with them. Cannot believe it. Smells like money. Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> is going to be here. Now, Batman may have his Batmobile. That's true. Right? And, I've seen a and couple the, uh, the Fantastic Four may have their Fantastic Car. Of course. And, and uh, Plastic, Plastic Man, Man um, his 1975 Gremlin. Yes. 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 But we have the official Yaris comic car right here. You can see it. Wait it is thing. wrapped with fear agents from Image Comics. Yes. So up it's Technicolor glory. It's so, so fresh and so yeah. clean. So I fresh just, and so clean, clean. I can just, I can just, just a little well, car model action, maybe. Um, no? That's that, really unacceptable. That's that's all right, I, fine. Now, if you're among the small group of people who react to Comic-Con with uh, <laughs> anything less than sweaty enthusiasm, <laughs> let us just take a minute to fill you in on why this is really the Geek Ground Zero. Comic-Con. 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 Oh, boy, you could do a, a whole interview about the San Diego Comic-Con. It's geek nirvana. Yeah, I've been going to that show for, like, ten years now. Comic-Con is this massive five-day event where people dress up in crazy costumes. It's also fondly referred to as nerd prom. It started out years ago, I don't remember when. Just a gathering of a lot of fans and occasionally some professional people in the field and it has grown over the years and grown and grown i guess now they're up to 100,000 people it's every kind of nerd that you've ever thought of or ever heard of or ever imagined and they're all there comic con is a place where no one has any shame where no matter who you are you feel that you look good in tights it's like this insane celebration of like sci-fi and fantasy and comics and toys and there are people running around dressed in chainmail which FYI causes rusting and chafing. Now when they hold that convention, so many of the people who attend are people from Hollywood, from the movies, from television, from all forms of the media. They're looking for the next great idea that might be in comic books. Now the movie studios come down there and show lots of uh, summer preview stuff or whatever and hype their wares. We were shooting in Australia and then took a plane directly to, uh, to San Diego, uh, got up on a stage. There were almost 7,000 people in the room and there's a lot, of, a lot of love in the room. I was there promoting Devil's Rejects and there was two or 300 Captain Spaulding's running around and they all, uh, Look disgusting. I've like 60 properties there, so I'm a little John Lennon walking into the place, always wear sunglasses, punch random strangers in the face. You know what I mean? Steal their women and just like make out with them right in front of them. And then say, in your face, nerd. Here, buy my stuff. I won't be there whoring and selling my movie as much as just being there for the sake of being there. Yeah, I'll be going to Comic Con for sure. Honestly, I'm looking forward to the entire con. I love the whole thing. I can't wait to go. You're watching Comic Con on G4. That guy's in touch. All right, folks, you know what? Don't worry if you miss that flight to San Diego, mm -hmm. really, because tonight we are bringing Comic Con to you. Yes, we have eyes, ears, noses, and hands all over the show floor. It is time to get in the trenches and give you guys the info you care about. We probably should have rethought the nose thing, though, to be honest. Just, <laughs> just saying. Here's our very bit. own Blair Butler. Thanks, Kevin and Olivia. Later, we're going to be checking in with the big two comic companies, Marvel and DC. And later, I'm going to be dressing up as a stormtrooper. But right now, we're going to find out what's up with Zach. Hey, thanks, Blair. I'm out here roaming the floors of Comic-Con, checking out the convention's hippest flicks. I'm also going to be stalking some of the sweet celebrities who came to hang out. And while everybody else is giving you the best that Comic-Con has to offer, I'm going to bring you the worst, meaning the crap. 
I call it comic crap, and believe me, there's a lot of it. Will, what you got going on? Thanks, Zach. I'm here at Comic-Con 2006. I'm going to show you all the best toys, the coolest video games I can find. Back to you, Kevin and Olivia. All right. Thanks, guys. Now, this isn't a free ride to Comic-Con, however. We need you to do some take-home assignments, like that's homework. Right. Listen, there's going to be a lot of mind-blowing stuff coming over your way over the next hour or so. Oh, wait. That's two of them. And we need you to remain calm and help us sort out the overhyped from the ass-kicking by voting in the heat index presented by Old Spice red zone clear gel that's right go to g4tv.com slash comic-con to vote since many of you will probably misspell comic-con there will be shortcuts on the g4tv.com main page we've got you covered and of course you folks that are on the go just text the word heat to g4txt that's 44898 text messaging rates will apply you can afford it relax and unleash your superhuman passions and vote folks now, enough of this foreplay, all right? We came to Comic-Con to see the action, to see the adventure, and, of course, to see the giant effing robots. Am I right? <laughs> that is right. Forget this summer's Johnny Depp and Brandon Routh. Who needs them? Next summer belongs to the hottest leading men I have really ever seen. The tall, dark, and handsome Megatron. And that hunk of fuel injection, Optimus Prime. He gets you going, doesn't he? A little bit. It's a little hot creepy. <laughs> and coming up, <laughs> just a little bit later, we have a huge Transformers announcement from the producer himself. That's Dick. right. You gotta stick with us right all night here. because we're giving you exclusives like nobody else will. That's right. Now, but right now, they're half of the comic books industry's quote unquote big two. That's right. They are the place Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman all call home. Yes, that's right. They're DC Comics, and we've got an exclusive floor report presented by Yaris. DC booth and this summer DC is relaunching some of its iconic characters like Wonder Woman, The Flash. Now if only Robin could get some pants. This fall we'll see the release of Justice Society of America number one and best of all, best-selling author Brad Meltzer is kickstarting a whole new Justice League of America. Plus, real-world alum Judd Winnick writes The Trials of Shazam. Of course, DC isn't all shiny superheroes. They also have three dark and mature indie lines, Vertigo, Wildstorm, and America's Best Comics. I wonder if that guy knows he has a monkey on his shoulder. The big news from Vertigo, there's an all-new Fables graphic novel by creator Bill Willingham that serves as a prequel to the current series and features dozens of artists. And horny dudes are already getting fired up over Josh Middleton's cover for American Virgin number 7. I, I can't imagine why. DC is awesome! I think he likes DC. DC's edgy wild storm line brings us cinematic goodness with a snakes on a plane comic book. And the entire DC universe fits on this man's shirt. From superheroes to super creepy, that's all from the DC booth. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go find a bat suit that fits me. Now comics and movies, they're, they're sort of on a double beer here, bill here at Comic-Con. Yeah. And right now, we'd like you to <coughs> sit back, relax, and enjoy the fright. We're showing you footage from maybe the most anticipated movie of the summer. And the title alone, I mean, it, it kind of spoils it all. That's right. It is Snake on a Plane, and we have an exclusive trailer. I have had it. 
sit with these mother effing snakes on this mother effing plane. Oh, I cannot wait. You're going to see it, right? Freaking Let's wait. Let's start a line. Let's start a line Let's next start week. Let's start a line. When Screw it, it opens in a couple weeks, and we'll just be in line. I'll bring the sleeping bag. You're on marshmallow nice. duty. I am. Marshmallows and the campfire. Now, the movie's tagline is on August 18th. Summer really begins, so I'm going to guess that that's probably when the movie opens. Yes, later we'll have more snakes on the plane, including an exclusive interview with Sam Jackson. Now, you just talked with him. I touched him. You touched him? His bodyguard slapped me in the eye, now, but I did touch, touch me? him. Absolutely. Cool, vicariously. Stay with us, folks. We have a huge show planned, and when we return, the full might of Comic-Con is coming with us. Now, prepared to get teased and tasered. Coming up next, X-Men director Brian Singer takes on the Man of Steel, and later, comic guru Blair Butler gets in touch with her inner stormtrooper. Comic-Con 06 Live is presented by the Yaris Sedan and Yaris Liftback. Different cars, same great attitude. Toyota, moving forward. Deal that brought you. Song. And the hostile. Get ready, folks. It's Mr. Stan Lee. I'm here with Stan Lee, the man, the myth. You rolled in here like a superstar, like Jesus Christ himself. And how's Comic-Con going for you today? Good, too. <laughs> oh, things are great. I've been on a couple of panels, and the audience must have thought I was someone else because they were so polite and nice and attentive. I, I'm having a great time. So you also have a new show coming on the sci -fi. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, a little bit? Once I start, I can't stop talking. Keep going. It is called... Who wants to be a superhero? Who is this child's mother? We received thousands of applications. We narrowed them down to about 200 and spent weeks interviewing those 200 people and finally honed them down into about 11. Now, we're not testing them for things like flying or being able to outrun a speeding Ferrari, but we're testing them for the things that make a true hero courage integrity self-sacrifice <laughs> and we have never had more fun this show will either be the biggest bomb in the world or the most successful show to hit tv no nobody is going to be lukewarm about it you're going to love it or hate it and from what i've seen so far i think people are going to love it where am i okay. when princess leia observed that luke skywalker was a little short for a stormtrooper Ooh. she obviously hadn't seen our own resident comic book expert and fledgling imperial grunt blair butler okay. so blair who knew there would be star wars fans here yeah i know imagine that <laughs> stormtrooper at the comic con i actually went deep into the world of uh the star wars fans and i learned what it took to be a stormtrooper all right take a look at the trouble blair stirred up oh man <laughs> It's four in the morning. <laughs> Thought I at least slept in makeup. Well, we'll teach you some basics of uh, how to march, uh, proper uh, decorum in the armor, uh, how to act while she's in armor, maintaining character in front of the public, and generally not disgrace herself. We're going to introduce her to new levels of pain. I think she's probably some sort of candy-ass, corn-fed mama's girl that's never had a hard day in her life. We're going to make her sweat. I can't move. We sweat more pounds off of more people by 9 a.m. in the morning than most people lose at the gym in a year. And seven. <laughs> this is your military left foot. On this case of left, you will plant your left heel firmly on the ground. Do you think you can get that training? Yes. Ready, three, forward, two. You know what this is, training? What? This is one of the few, the proud, the 501st Legion. Someday, if you play your cards right, sad sack, you too can consider yourself one of these. But right now, don't even think about it. Can I see some ID, please? Just one second, please. There's no, there's no respect for the Imperial authority here. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to write you a citation for nudity. Not appropriate. Not appropriate at all. Sir, but uh, I'm afraid lightsabers have been forbidden. You're gonna have to put that away. I think you guys are the uh, droids I've been looking for. I'm gonna have to ask you to come with me. So, uh, be honest, does this uh, thermal detonator make my ass look big? Your ass never looks big. Woo! Yeah! 
So, uh, what do you say we uh, go back to my place and uh, compare chest plates? Uh, sure. Get back here, Sam. <laughs> oh, crap. You know what? I, uh, I totally have the hang of this stormtrooper thing. And uh, to be honest, I, I really feel like I'm part of the troop, which is great because hey, I know. Uh, uh, well, 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 guys, uh, what's going uh, on? Uh, guys. Uh, I'll ask her always um, keep waiting to keep in the outfits like me. You are out. You are gone. But I, but I you are no more. All right, now, Blair, <laughs> even looking around at our own audience, I can yeah. see that there's maybe 12 or yeah. 13,000 people walking around yeah, in costumes. Yeah, there's lots of them. And I don't know what it's like to, to stare at them, but what's it like behind the mask? Yeah. Is right. it crazy? Uh, actually, I have to say, it's like walking around in a big fishbowl, being in one of those helmets. But, uh, you know, the thing the thing that I like about it is just, like, people, people come up to you, they want to take pictures, and uh, it, it is really hot. I have to emphasize, extremely hot. It's right. sweaty hot. No, it was your dream to, like, get into a Stormtrooper costume. Yeah. I heard you were, like, in awe the entire time. I was a little excited. I've always wondered, like, what it takes to sort of don the uh, the PVC, you know, and, and march around. You feel pretty great? You know, I, I felt a little, uh, I felt a little spandex class, but yeah. it's cool because little kids will yeah. come up to you. And you can't see, and you sure. wind up walking over them, which is awkward. But then, uh, when so they, after you trample but they them, love, but they love you. They <laughs> right. look up at you. They can't believe that you're exactly, a stormtrooper. Exactly. And the funniest thing was one time I took the helmet off, and this little kid goes, "Stormtrooper is a woman." Oh. <laughs> it's like Santa. I know. It's, like, some, the it's like the Easter Bunny yeah. taking his head off in our Mickey Mouse moving the head at Disney World. Yeah. Well, way to ruin lives. I know. Way to ruin lives. Okay, it is time for console pounding goodness when gamers get to decide the best of the best of the best. That's right. X plays Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. They're going to be hosting G for you. It's our annual video game award show. And they've given you their brutally honest opinions yep. all year long. But now, tables are turning. <laughs> it's your chance to have a say. That's right. This year, you cast a vote and you decide which names will be inside those envelopes. Don't cut yourself. Yeah, that mag and that Adam and Morgan open up. Thanks, Kevin and Olivia. Democracy is our nation's greatest treasure. In this election year, we encourage you to participate in the electoral process by getting out and campaigning for the candidates you believe in. As long as they're candidates for winning the awards at Geforia, G4's Video Game Awards show. Now, don't pay attention to those people running for governor and stuff. They don't care about you. Not like Mario or Daxter. <gasps> public figures who have actually done something to make your life better. The future is in your hands. Don't waste it on stupid stuff like politics. Waste it on video games and voting about video games. So get out and vote. Or text the word vote to G4TXT. See, everyone would vote for president if you could do it by texting. We'll have all the election results for you on a very special g 4 night. So be sure to tune in right here on August 8th at 6 p.m. You know, I, I don't know, Olivia. I think the name is wrong. I gotta be honest. I can't find anything but pros at this Comic-Con. <laughs> Oh, seriously, you cannot be crashing this early, Kevin. Because there's a lot of great stuff here. Seriously, and Kevin. And there's really nothing bad about it. Oh, my God. Kevin, seriously, I can't do the show on my own. That's really just like, do you need some water? I'll uh, hold it together. Good. Sorry. Uh, good. You all right? I'm good. Okay, you guys, when we come back, we'll be tanned, rested, and hopefully not crying, and ready for some more Comic-Con greatness. Seriously, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Before your very eyes. Look around, people. This, this is, is mine, what it's like. Actually. It is. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Olivia Munn. And I'm still Kevin Pereira, and this is the place where comic book creators show off their stuff. That's you know, true. video games get to the hands of eager fans, and movie studios figure out which set of tights are going to find themselves wrapped around an Affleck or Maguire <laughs> or a Pereira. Really? Or a Munn, even. A Munn. I do tights. We never do know. tights? Absolutely. I do on the weekend. <laughs> now, the X-Men have already conquered comic books, cartoons, and, of course, the box office, but Marvel's Merry Mutants are about to be brought into a whole new world. Care of some very dedicated fans. We got a chance to get behind the scenes of this very special passion project. We have been doing the Comic-Con Masquerade for um, how long? Uh, five years. Yeah, five years now, and uh, I tell you what, it never gets old. Anyone can recreate famous comic book battles. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't really express our passion, so uh, we like to make our performances musical. Because I'm the juggernaut, bitch. He's the juggernaut, bitch. Right now we're on a pretty big mutant kick. 
Yeah, we've had a lot of success with X-Men themed work. But right now we're working on a little piece we call the fiery immolation of the Phoenix. The pain of my flesh being ripped apart is not compared to this pain in my heart. What's going on in my head? Everywhere I look, the people are dead. The voice is inside. not a classically trained singer and a lot of people are surprised about that absolutely i was shocked when i found out yeah i know <laughs> i on the other hand am a classically trained singer why is my love killing you no no you're off pitch again why no, is no, my no. love stop thinking about it just do it I we do have our rough patches mm -hmm. but um it's the love and the music that uh, keeps bringing us back together. F you, Kevin. Wait. My adamantium bone have meant that I've lived alone. My regenerative power through sun and rain shower. I've walked the world around until there was you. Until there. In the end, uh, it doesn't matter who wins or if we even place. The point is the X-Men have taught us to overcome our differences. They may have laser eye vision and uh, psychic energy blasts, but we have our music. Yeah. And in the end, really, what's more powerful? Well, probably the laser eyes. Oh, In this quiet, serene California town lives one of the fiercest mutants and most heroic warriors that the world has ever known. I, I'm Esteban Marinos. I am personally at Wolverine. Esteban is a contractor during the week, but is famous for his weekend Wolverine appearances at Hollywood Boulevard and at comic book conventions nationwide. But what inspires Esteban to play the part? I got into the character just because of uh, the hair, you know. I pretty much uh, use almost a half a bottle of hairspray. I use my pick, you know, I use my shaver, you know. It, it's, all, it's, all, it's all part of the, the tools of uh, bringing the character to life. Esteban's total dedication to Wolverine only begins with his hair. I have the tattoos on my hand because in Weapon X, they, they put those in his hand to guide the blades out. I have quite like four sets of claws. And uh, the new set of blades I got now is, uh, they're aluminum. And uh, they, they, look, they look pretty real, but they're not sharp. There's much more to this vigilante hero than hair maintenance, ink, and claws. It's also spandex. Yeah, the hardest part of making a costume is finding the time, the patience, and the material. Now, this costume here took me about four months. Uh, I use uh, Toy Biz toys for uh, getting in detail for the comic outfits, and I buy the toy because you can flip it over and see the back and get in detail what you're missing in the comic book. Weapon X, uh, that costume pretty much is Wolverine stripped. He's down to his undies, and uh, a lot of girls take more photos of me in that costume than any other costume. And guess what? This Wolverine has a family. My family, they support me, they go with me. They like to collaborate with everything I do and be part of it and experience it. I love having Wolverine for a dad because it's fun seeing him dress up. I would love to dress up as a character, but I just haven't found the right one yet. There's times when it's not always easy. He comes home late, and then I have to question, you know, 
he's really working out, but I support him. When we go to Comic Cons, it's really great, and I know he loves it. There's something about the Comic Con that I just love. All right, uh, I really shouldn't have brought you here. You're really, oh. you're really weird in this environment, Kevin. All right, stick around because there's lots more Attack of the Show Comic Con 06 Live headed your way. You are creepy. Next, find out why the character is more than just the costume. Go to G4TV.com slash Comic Con to vote or text the word HEAT to G4TXT, that's 44898, and tell us what's what. <laughs> Obviously, if you're someone who enjoys dressing up like your favorite fantasy character, then Comic-Con is like Mecca and Graceland just rolled into one. Yeah. But if you're going to do it, do it right. Here are some handy tips as we ask you to feed your wild side, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Comic-Con only comes around once a year, and that means just one chance to make your Comic-Con costume memorable. So, if you're going to dress up, we thought we'd lay out some helpful do's and don'ts to make your con a more enjoyable experience. Do work out. If you're going to dress up like a superhero, it helps if you're built like one, so please, please do crunches. Don't scar your children for life. Someday, their future girlfriends will see this and laugh. Do try to keep inappropriate nudity to a minimum. Seriously, there are film crews here, and we will record you. Don't expect to be the only stormtrooper, or the only Jedi, or the only Boba Fett, or the only Imperial Guard. Seriously, other people have thought of this too. It's just like an FYI. Do work in pairs. Batman and Robin, Predator and Alien. At least this way, when someone tries to beat you up for dressing like that, you've got backup. Or someone else to take a couple of the punches. Do be creative. We like Boxmas Prime. We like Elvis Trooper. We like Fat Unemployed Skeletor. But we still have no idea who the hell this chick is supposed to be. And those were a few helpful do's and don'ts to make your Comic-Con a little more pleasurable for everybody else. All right, Olivia, we have yeah. a veritable parade of <laughs> costume weirdos here, so let's find yeah. out to get a, a big old thumbs up or a dismissive, we just don't think so. <laughs> That's good. It's official. We have become the geek equivalent of basically Joan and Melissa Rivers. I'm so Joan, by the way. Yes, you are. All right, let <laughs> the parade begin, folks. You want to do it? Let's start yes. it off. Yes, we got Mystique over here. Yes, Mystique is in here, please. From, from Come on in here. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Now, did you put this together yourself? Yes, I did, actually. Just for Comic-Con? Yes. Wow. Now, Important question, are you naked underneath just like how Mystique was? Because she, officially, she's naked. It's true. Yes, actually, there's not room for much else. Could we get a portable box fan <laughs> on the, oh, no, is, that, is that not possible? Okay, well, Mystique, right. I'm sorry, I didn't, listen, with all due respect, I noticed that the uh, the paint was smudging a little well, bit around the waistline, so if you want, I can uh, I can brush that fan, fair enough, fair enough, looks, looks great, flawless costume. Mystique, Beautiful. flawless, flawless, of oh, course. Oh, okay, yeah, we're here. They're not alone, come on in here, please. We've got Spider-Man and, of course, Black Cat. Wow. I was just getting comfy yeah, with Black Storm. Cat earlier, actually. This is Storm. Black Cat? Black Cat. Black Cat. Looks very similar. Now, this, the quality of this, this is rivaling some of the stuff that I've seen in the movie. Did you make this, or is this uh, like a Walmart aisle 3 special? Actually, uh, my uh, girlfriend, ex-girlfriend Mary Jane made it for me. Oh, ex wow. your ex but That's right. Now, now yeah. did you reveal yourself on the streets like Spider-Man did in the comic? Uh, yes, yes, I did. That's probably why she uh, is my ex-girlfriend right. now. Yeah. And you, you revealed the mask. Let's let's clean that up for the kids at oh, home. Yeah, That's yeah. what you revealed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just making yeah. sure. Now, Black Cat, I gotta say, I don't care who made your costume, I don't care where it came from, but you have an amazing body. Can we get a shot down yeah. of how ridiculous this body is? Unbelievable. How, how did you get the air out? Did you use a straw or like a food, <laughs> like one of those food compressors? I am not going to let you know that. It's my it's, little secret. It's fantastic. Oh. Can we see the, the whole costume? I don't I mean... Normally you get slapped for asking that, but wow. at a convention, they're like, absolutely. Wow. Unbelievable. Fantastic. You guys look great. Wow. I'm trying that on after. <laughs> guys, thanks for joining us. You'll look even better. Of course, wherever the geeks gather, <laughs> toys and collectibles, they're never far behind. Yes. Whether you're a hardcore collector or just a guy who likes to decorate his cubicle, we've got you covered with this in-depth look at the toys of Comic-Con.
I'm here at the Hasbro booth at Comic Con 2006. As you can see behind me, there's tons of toys. I'm really excited. I should go back and check them all out. Come on. Now, everybody knows that comic book fans have to have more than their colored panels. So we're here to check out some of the latest Hasbro toys. They're going to hit the market soon. So I'm here with Greg Lombardo from Hasbro. Now, Greg, Transformers are on fire right now. Can you give us a rundown of the product line? Sure. Uh, we've got an exclusive Nemesis Prime alternator for sale here. We've got a line around the place. Uh, our newest product that's coming out in November is called Transformers Classics, which is a, a take on the old G1 characters. Optimus Prime, Megatron, classic characters from G1 that we've redone in an all-new way. I'm here with Daryl Dupreeze from Hasbro. Daryl, you have what may be the best job at Comic-Con. You're the director of marketing for the Star Wars product at Hasbro. Tell me about all these products. One of the special figures we're doing to, to actually celebrate the fan enthusiasm for Star Wars is called the 501st Stormtrooper. The 501st is a fan battalion of guys who dress up in costumes. So what we're doing is a figure as a tribute to the fans. Life imitates art, imitates life. I'm here with Eric Nyman from Hasbro. Eric, why don't you tell us about what you guys showing off today? One of our big stories is Spider-Man Origins. We really took all the figures that Spider-Man has either done battle with or been partnered with or different versions of Spider-Man from either the comic book universe, the DVD universe, or the movie universe. And while you're growing that men out there, get your asses off the couch, run down to your local toy store, and pick up some of these goodies. And by the way, the moms there, they think you're creepy. And if you want to get your hands on some of these Hasbro toys, we're going to be giving them away this Monday and Tuesday on Attack of the Show, airing at 7 p.m. Eastern. But uh, I'm feeling yeah. kind of frisky. Definitely. I mean, we got the Comic-Con crowd. Anybody want some collectibles ah. by any chance? All right. Anybody at all? To I get these to toys, all there. you guys have to do is send Coming us a video here. voicemail through Bob, our website, and you'll definitely want to because this stuff is only on sale at Comic-Con and at HasbroToyShop.com. Once they sell out, they are gone. You gotta get them yeah. while you can. Why don't you? Yeah, get, get rid of that. This. We don't mess around with stuff that ain't collectible, no. folks. Nice, t good arm. And they're fighting. Now and they're, they're fighting. fighting. Great. There, You're blood, gonna get blood a kicked out. Blood now, was drawn. Comic Con is no fighting. <laughs> now Comic Con has truly become an international <laughs> event. And what more proof do you need than a representative from Kazakhstan walking <gasps> the convention floor? Mm -hmm. That's true. Borat is here, <laughs> and we caught up with them. As he was uh, going through some cultural learning. Wearing that bikini? Oh. Yeah, hey, Rick's gear on the streets of Sin City. Fellas, tuck in your tongues and uh, spray on the Drakkar. Because we're getting up close and personal with Rosario Dawson. Attack of the show's new correspondent, Rosario Dawson. We're going A list now. So, Clerks 2 as well. <laughs> Big sequel coming out. You're dominating in that movie. Um, what was it like to work with Mr. Kevin Smith? Uh, pretty amazing, actually. I felt like I was joining a family. It was a very nostalgic set to be on. It was pretty awesome. We got a lot of humor. We talked a lot of comics, actually, while yeah. we were working on that. You are a comic book fan. Yeah, I know. I think our first meeting, we talked about anal bleaching and Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. It was a good meeting. Yeah, anal bleaching, of course, <laughs> taking over this year, people. You're also here promoting a comic book called OCT. What does that stand for? The Occult Crimes Task Force is um, our first comic where we're 12 gauge and uh, image. I play Sophia Ortiz, who is a detective who's policing magical crime in New York City. Magical crime like when Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear? <laughs> exactly, stuff like that. I mean, everything, you know, from creatures to, you know, explaining why in Florida there's a law that says you can't marry an elephant to a dog. I'm going, well, that's a law, and someone took the time to put it into law. Well, there goes my idea to crossbreed the pack-a-doodle. <laughs> half pack-a-derm, half poodle. What about yeah. Sin City 2? Is that in the process of being made right now? There's already talks about it. You know, it's, you know, it's all hush-hush, but it's maybe a game to kill for, and it's maybe with Andrew and Julie, and it's maybe shooting at the beginning of next year. Uh, and then you did mention Grindhouse. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, Grindhouse is a double feature. It's a double feature that uh, Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino are putting together. It's going to be two separate hour-long films. Robert's a zombie film, and Quentin's a gearhead slasher film. So pretty exciting. Rosario well, Dawson, thanks for talking to us. Watch Attack of the Show on G4, would you? All right, well, would you tell these people to watch Attack of the Show? Watch Attack of the Show, folks. We are about to enter our own version of the Weapon X program where we're going to erase your memories and then stick for an object. Have open copy of the Essential Spider-Man on their chest and maybe a warm cup of Ovaltine on their nightstands. Dreaming. Speaking of dreams, how would you like to work in an office where you share a cubicle with Spider-Man or chat by the water cooler with Professor X or maybe help the Submariner steal office supplies? Big fan of the Swing Line Stapler. Well, one man lives that dream and we've got some face time with Marvel Comics Editor-in-Chief Joe Quesada.
If you thought the summer couldn't get any hotter, then you haven't been reading Marvel lately. The House of Ideas just ripped its world apart by pitting hero against hero in its epic Civil War storyline. Then they tossed a Molotov cocktail on the fire by giving Spider-Man a new costume and then unmasking him. It was an event that polarized fans and sold out everywhere. So who's steering one of the most eventful and emotional times in Marvel history? It's editor-in-chief, Joe Quesada. Joe, thank you for joining us here on the old Attack of the Show Comic-Con special. Me, really blessed. Civil War series. Wait, wait. Can I get a hug? <laughs> Absolutely. Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh, yes, yes. You just made you just made three actual girls jealous. Really? There are a couple back there. Why, because Civil you War series. Me? Yeah, absolutely. I've shown you the love. Let's talk Civil War. Show love to the fans because this is something that's really, it's polarizing the fans. It is. What's coming up this year? What's going on with this epic well, battle? All hell is breaking loose in the Marvel Universe. All I can promise the fans is that at the end of Civil War, nothing will be as it seems, nothing will be as you expect it. It's going to be outrageous, incredible. Wait, does that mean you're doing like a memory wipe and going back? and all No, we are not taking it back. Okay. We're not taking it back. That's that would be unfair. We get fans to invest their money on Civil War, on our books. How much would it suck if we just took it all away? Well, there, there's a lot of concern. I was reading the message. Guarantee we're not taking it Also uh, heard a couple things. Maybe Thor coming back to life. Yes or no? Thor is back. Fantastic. He's That's absolutely what I like back. To now, Spider-Man comes out, reveals himself as yes, Peter Parker. Absolutely. Nerd outcry everywhere. Broke the glass. It was crazy. On the car, actually. Was, we had to replace the yard. It was really crazy. And, uh, you know, we, we, were, we were expecting some kind of feedback from the fans. We just didn't expect it to be national recognition. It was really one of the most, I think, one of the most eventful things that have happened in comics maybe in the last 20 years. People were hefting issues out by the dozens. It was my email account, had my server closed down. It was it was crazy, man. It was yeah. absolutely crazy. Now, now, I, I, can you guys take this back? You can't now at this point, right? This has to affect the series from it's here on out. It's going to affect Spider-Man for quite a while. And, and again, it, all this stuff is about story. It's about making the fans happy, giving you the kind of Marvel stuff that you've come to know over the last 40-plus years in the tradition of Stan and Jack and, and Ditko and John Romita Sr. and all those guys. That's what this is all about, making the fans happy and uh, selling some comic books, man. Well, of course. Now, what about selling movie tickets? Yeah. We want, you want the fans to plant their butts in the seats this year. How are the, the, the movie franchises coming along? Look, How I mean, Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man, I mean, I probably... I that. There were, uh, there the were little, two other ones, Guy in the Costume. Yeah, the two little movies. They didn't, you know, they did okay for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Spider-Man is really the, the hallmark, the benchmark by which all superhero movies are measured now. Right. And you guys are the font for the PlayStation 3. I mean, that's yeah. just something. Yeah, Hello. just a little something. So, Spider-Man 3, I believe, is out in May. Mm -hmm. We also have Ghost Rider, which is going to rock. It's coming out in February. Nick Cage on fire. I Nick mean, Cage, Hello. flaming skull, flaming bike, the whole thing, man. It's hot. Any 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 inside tips, any spoilers you can give us about uh, the Ghost Rider? Uh, he may kill a few people. Okay, just somebody's a few. dying. And what yes. else? I know there's at least one more here. Iron Man. John Favreau directing Iron Man. I, I will tell you right now, I'm probably more excited about Iron Man, the movie, than anything we've done, even Spider-Man. As much as I love Spider-Man, Iron Man is going to rock. If you had to pick one, which you'd see in John, put me on the spot, pick a baby, pick a favorite. You know what? I love Sam Raimi. Can't wait for three, but Iron Man is, is going to oh, be great. There you go. Surprising. Yeah. I thought you were going to Spider-Man. Joe, thank you for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, really talking about it. all things comic. Now, someone our viewers would love to see sporting the Witchblade costume. <laughs> I've seen it twice. It's fantastic. <laughs> Olivia Munn. Okay, thanks, Kev. Sure, Keanu Reeves had to keep a bus trucking at 55 miles per hour in order to avoid disaster and killing people. But in Jason Statham's latest movie, The Transporter, the star has to keep his own adrenaline level up or else he dies. Cue an action flick that can't stop for breather even if you wanted to. I give you Crank. So I'm here with uh, Jason Statham. From uh, Crank, why don't you? Uh, you're a big time guy. You got to do big. All right. Let's find out what you guys thought. First up is DC's 52, a new comic every week for the whole year. Man, those artist hands must be getting really cramped by now. But here's how you rated it: 31% of you thought that DC 52 was warm. What do you think about that, Blair? Ooh. You know, I, I think 52 is like an amazingly ambitious idea, and I think it's really great um, that they're trying to do it. It just kind of hasn't kicked in yet. The mechanics, um, it's really, it, it sort of hasn't grabbed me yet. Um, I think there's You're going to wait to the end of the year and buy the entire set? There's supposed to be some sort of shocking event that takes place. It just hasn't happened yet, so I'm kind of waiting for it to start All right. really catching fire. Well, next up is Spider-Man Unmasked. Now, right. the world knows that... The webhead is, is Tobey Maguire, right? Yes. We get that. Yes. I mean, Peter Parker, of course. But does, does losing 
his secret identity make for a better superhero? Here's what you thought. 48% of you thought Spider-Man being unmasked was volcanic. Mm, yes. Heated up frenzy there. You know, here's the thing about this. This event has sold more comics than, like, anything in the or, past couple yeah. of years. So, you know, I like it. I think it's going to be some interesting new Spider-Man stories, but I know the fans are upset. Let me just say, if you're upset, Ultimate Spider-Man is always going to have that secret identity thing going. So, I All think right. that's good stuff. Good stuff. Well, next up is Snakes on a Plane. Now, how freaking cool was our exclusive Sam Jackson? Kevin, that was amazing, right? Thank you. Here's what you said. 40% of you thought Snakes on a Plane was volcanic. Miss Butler. No surprise yeah. for me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was watching the interview with uh, Sam Jackson. I just... I, I think it's uh, it looks so campy. I, I like a good campy movie, so I'm, yeah. I'm all over it. I'll be there on opening night at midnight. <laughs> all right, next up yep. is dressing like a superhero. Yeah. Now, geeks spend hours at home. They're, they're welding homemade Iron Man costumes or rubbing Rogaine on their faces to get the, the Wolverine sideburns. Here's what you think about it. 35% felt that dressing as a superhero was warm. Oh, huh. What about that? You dressed as a stormtrooper all day. You I were very did. warm in there, but... You no, know, it, it was... Inside that costume, it was volcanic. So, um, <laughs> so I'll just say, you know, I, I think when people get passionate and make these elaborate costumes that we're seeing around us on the set, I actually think it's kind of cool. Don't wear it to Arby's, because you're going to scare the children. No, no, you know what I'm saying? Nice. That might freak people out a little. So, uh, right. maybe not in public, but it's con, absolutely. Okay. and finally, right. lesbian Batwoman. Personally, I'm all over the story. I cannot wait for her to start hooking up with Wonder Woman. Ditto. Dem Ditto. All right, here's what you thought. 55% of you said lesbian Batwoman was volcanic. And you, Blair? Yeah, I, I can see what the guys thought yeah. it was volcanic. For me, you know, I, okay. I think it's interesting and it's a, it's a cool choice for DC. But I just don't think it's... There are a lot of gay characters in, in comic right. books. Um, it so was volcanic, Blair. Volcanic. I'm yeah. sorry. Thanks so much. Heated me up. We're Kevin, right up. We are about to wrap Explosive. things up. But hurry back or you'll miss the cliffhanger ending. Is this where you accidentally lose control of your powers and you incinerate me only to discover that I was actually Earth 2, Kevin Pereira? Because... Thanks for ruining it. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh all God. right. That was... Wow. That was very good. All right. Everybody else... Everybody else but my buddy Lewis. Lewis, do the yell. Let me hear it. Come on. Yell. That was, all right. That was terrible, actually. Welcome to a live, very special Comic-Con edition of Attack of the Show, TV's only source for what you care about. It's Monday the 24th. Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Pereira. Olivia Munn, out on assignment. She got lost in PJ. No idea where. Today, we continue our Comic-Con coverage with a very special edition of Attack of the Show. And joining us today is the comic queen, Miss Blair Butler. Thank you, Kevin. Says it on your business card. I know, I know. And it's that underneath. Big nerd. Yeah, giant. <laughs> so Comic-Con ended yesterday, and today we're filling you in on everything that went down from the big announcements to the scoops to the star sightings, all of it. To the stench. Yeah. actually, it which was, was not... there this year. You think every year someone could just breathe the nerves, Yeah, but no. I know. They need to hang out, hand out some, like, deodorant. At, <laughs> right, at the badge <laughs> check. Just squirt them down. Like right. They... <laughs> all right, well, let's get right to it. What did you think were the big stories this year? You were there, you had a lot of fun, you oh, ran yeah. around. What did you see? I have to say Spider-Man 3 and that Venom footage. Yeah. They basically unveiled some exclusive footage of uh, Topher Grace turning into Venom. Mm -hmm. Confirmed Venom for everybody. And the fans, I mean, the fans are so excited about this movie. They were just completely freaking out. Do you so. feel like do you feel like, the, like Sam Raimi's a bigger star than, than Topher Grace or Tobey Maguire uh, like at a Comic-Con? Because it seems like the fans were more interested in shaking his hand and getting yeah. his autograph. Well, I mean, you know, look at, it's like, you know, Evil Dead and just so many great movies sure. that he's worked on. So, yeah, I think, I think people, people will just freak out over, over really the cult guys, like the behind the scene mm -hmm. guys there, so. Well, speaking of great movies, I know Grindhouse yes. was there and that, that caught yeah. everybody by surprise. Grindhouse, you know, I, I didn't get to see the clip, but apparently this is, this is a film by Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez, and they actually unspooled a clip from Planet Terror, which is uh, Rodriguez's segment and it has Rose McGowan with a I believe like a like a rifle or a machine gun for a leg Hot. and apparently it was just crazy like people were losing their nerd cookies <laughs> all over the place all right uh, cool that all that stuff was there but I don't think you got to see any of it because I saw a photo of your comic-con <laughs> experience which I think is even around the net right now yeah and uh, it involves you and a stormtrooper outfit do we, mm -hmm. uh, do we have yeah. the image okay so that's no, no. That's <laughs> I wish that was me. You, you look great as a brunette, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, do we have the stormtrooper image, which is the one of you, I think, passed out, right, helmetless, on right. the floor of the exactly. convention Exactly. That second image was how I see myself in the stormtrooper <laughs> outfit. Right. But yeah. But what was the deal with you? You passed out on the convention You know, floor. You, there's not a lot of flexibility, so I just kind of, I dropped, and once you drop, you can't get back up without help. 
So I lay there like a like a dorky roadside attraction. And they point at you with their yeah. saber. They My poke helmet you with them. rolled off. It was embarrassing. <laughs> and and the people in the background were just kind of looking at me. Did anyone help? No. No, not no, so much. Not I just I just kind of lay there and you know. An occasional saber prod. Right. They're like, ah, oh, she's dead. Forget yeah. it. All right. Well, we're talking Comic Con for the entire show, folks. And now it's time for our equivalent of snakes on a Ooh. server because we're going around the net. The Miss Universe pageant was on last night, and in case you missed it, and, and why should you, here's the only part worth watching. Of course, the talent section, right? Clearly, you were blind and deaf. <laughs> no, Aww. I'm talking about the swimsuit competition. They have talent. Hello. <laughs> uh, not bad. Not bad, but yes. what's with the, the, might as well be wearing a onesie between <laughs> the sash and the, what the hell is that? They look like Destiny's Child. <laughs> no, they, they even have the, uh, like, like, you know, like a, a Barbie straight out of the package that's still on the right. little plastic stand with the big pole up there, plastic right. ass. Right, exactly. You see, what, They're bedazzled. Why were they standing on the little metallic discs, though? Because like, if, if they move too much, the makeup cracks. <laughs> they, they actually melt. Right. Miss Puerto Rico's face. Well, anyway, after it was all said and done, Miss Puerto Rico ah. herself, uh, Zulika Rivera Mendoza. No! Yes, she could also be a news <laughs> announcer. She yeah. was the winner. Here she is getting crowned, uh, but the big story that has been all over the internet is that just a few minutes after receiving the title, she straight up fainted. She yeah. Apparently it's exhausted and she just passed right out like, uh, right. like a nerd in a stormtrooper <laughs> costume, apparently. She's <laughs> fine like now. Me. She's fine now, but I, you know, I expect Miss Universe to have a little more intestinal fortitude. Yeah, you don't want to see him dropping like a fly. No, and, she, and she's supposed to be the hottest chick in the universe. Like, the hottest chick in the universe does not faint at the drop of a hat, <laughs> even after pageant face. Yeah. So, there she is right there. There she's uh, passing out there. Kind of like a poor man's J-Lo, that Miss Puerto Rico. Yeah. I'll be honest. You know, I have to say, we were at Comic-Con this weekend, and I saw women who were uh, a little, little bit more attractive, actually. And cosplaying. And, yeah, I mean, spandex and painted blue and, God bless you know. And look, if we're talking this universe here, I have to say, lesbian Batwoman, yes. she's got to be in the running. She wears the tight spandex, right. got a utility belt. She has webbed armpits, apparently. Right. Picks up uh, with other hot chicks, apparently. She does a little hooking up. Right. Not and bad. You, you know, you can never forget, when you're talking about sexy comic ladies, the She-Hulk. Oh, look at that. She is green. Right. She can lift an automobile over her head. Yes. She has gamma-radiated blood. Very green, if I mentioned the green. Smoking hot. Yeah. Can use the, the breast as a Hulk smash, actually. Yes, she, she has, she has gamma children. augmented cleavage. God bless her. She Hulk smoking hot, but no other comic chick, and I'm just going to end this thing right okay. now. All I, right. I'm going all in. Peppermint Patty. Nobody's hotter. <laughs> she wears the sandals. Sometimes she got those cute emo glasses. You know she has some of other chicks. She's got a tube top, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> totally <laughs> overlooked. Uh, but I Peppermint Patty would never faint at the pressure button. Yeah, plus she can also lay linoleum in your bathroom if you need <laughs> it. She's a, she's a handy gal. Women of many talents. All right, let's uh, let's close this little digital newspaper. That's going to end around the net. Go to attackoftheshow.com for the links to everything you just saw. But right now, let's check in with the cut of the pilot episode. And everyone, I have to say, including me, was talking about Frank Miller's 300. It's a film that's going to make the Sin City fans completely freak out because it's in color. It's in color, which yeah. was sadly missing from stylized Sin City. and in color. All right. So seriously, though, what was the big announcement to come out of Comic Con? That's the question for you folks. It's time for the loop poll. Now, what was buzzworthy at Comic-Con 06? Was it Spider-Man 3, Snakes on a Plane, or NBC's Heroes? What do you think of what? Yeah, I'm thinking Heroes probably not going to win the poll. Probably not so much. <laughs> but you vote by text message. Special Comic-Con edition of Attack of the Show. We're live and we're talking Comic-Con. Now, before the break, we ask you, what do you think was the most buzzworthy thing at Comic-Con 2006? Well, 46% of you mm. thought that snakes on a plane was the most buzzworthy thing at Comic-Con. Entertainment. Gentlemen, welcome to the loop. Comic-Con, I know everybody's a little exhausted. We had to put the costumes away. Uh, but let's get serious here. Chris Gore, what were you most excited to see and or hear about out of Comic-Con? Well, I'll tell you what. If you can pull a muscle from geeking out, I have several pulled muscles. I'll tell you, Spider-Man 3, I'll just echo what Blair said. It's amazing. Getting a look at Venom for the first time had fans just going ape crap. Um, and also, that, you know, revealing that Topher Grace is Venom is something a lot of fans have suspected, but now we finally have confirmation. In fact, today, Sony just released a photo in the form of wallpaper on the Spider-Man 3 official website. You can get a look at Topher transforming right. into Venom. It's going to be awesome. It's a very it's Lincoln Park still. He's about to break. He's screaming. He's got the black goo yeah. on. Yeah. Looks awesome. Amazing I don't know, Chris, stuff. I think that the, uh, the 300 footage is pretty good, too, you know. That looked really, really awesome. Can't forget about the 300 I mean, footage. A lot of people didn't get to see it, though. They haven't released it yet. Why, why are they holding this back uh, from the, uh, the nerds at large? Uh, I don't know. 
you have to also think about the Transformers announcement with Peter Cullen, the original voice. He was real, that was a real, really big uh, announcement that was made yesterday, I mean, on Saturday. Sure. Now, Scott, for those of us who, who aren't wearing capes or who don't live surrounded by wood paneling, <laughs> what were we excited to see? What was Comic-Con about for us? Well, it's really about snakes on a plane. All of these other things are incremental. They've been there before. The comic books are fine, but Snakes on the Plane had the biggest buzz. They had 19 snakes there, an anaconda. This is the movie that people are talking about. It's fine to have your third installment of Spider-Man, but there's nothing there that they really haven't been seeing before for the past three or four years. Snakes on the Plane, Samuel Jackson, uh, it's absolutely the film everyone is talking about. Scott, no disrespect, but this is called San Diego Comic-Con, so the biggest announcements should have been comic book related. Comic-Con, um, you got... Yeah, you have All Star Wonder Woman with Adam Hughes. Uh, you have um, um, you have um, Action Comics with Jeff Johns and Richard Donner. Comic books. Uh, have, have, comic books haven't had anything to do with Comic Con for the past six years. <laughs> really, this has become a place where the studios look for demographics. They're looking for young kids. This is about the movies. Nobody cares about comic books anymore. This is where you get your film off the ground. The studios could care less about the comic books. In fact, if anything, they're moving away from the comic books, and all they want is the 18 to 34-year-olds to pay attention to them. Comic-Con might as well be called Studio-Con. Well, that, Scott, you're well, definitely right. You're right uh, about one thing. It's definitely turned into an orgy of pop culture, but Snake's on a Plane, and we've been hearing it so often. I mean, come on, enough already. Release the movie. Let's see what you got. It's all about the film. There's already a, a competing film coming out called Snake's on a Train that's coming direct to DVD. I don't know. I mean, I think it could run a theme, seriously. But now, Chris, th does it bother you at all, you know, being that, you know, we have comic book fans, clearly it's getting away from that. We're going to the big, the big budget movies, bigger hype for Comic-Con. Does it concern you at all that it seems to be less about the comics now? Uh, well, no, I actually like that because it does cross over. Uh, it, but it's interesting, they had a big premiere party uh, for the film Accepted, where a lot of the comic book fans actually came out. It, they had this giant sign that said, Welcome Shafid. It was really, and then uh, there was a giant party there where they were serving free liquor. It's a comedy in the vein of Animal House. What does it have to do with comic books? It's definitely grown out of control. And it's no longer well, about exactly. comic books. I mean, The Reaping uh, is going to be a supernatural uh, horror film. It has mm -hmm. absolutely nothing to do with comic books anymore. When it began, it was 300 people in a basement. If you want a comic book convention, you need to go find another basement. Because this Can is you a place tell me where why, then? if you want your TV show to get attention, if you want your studios, if the studios want to get their kids, this is where they're going to go. Mel, what happened? What happened to your Comic-Con? I agree. I agree what they're saying, but tell me why the Ghost Whisperer is at Comic-Con. What does that have to do with comics? What does that have to do with fantasy, science fiction, horror? I love Jennifer Love Hewitt as much as the next guy. But what was Ghost Whisperer doing there? I actually I think every I guy know. at Comic-Con loves Jennifer Love Hewitt as well. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that explains something as well. Chris, let's, let's go to the television side of things because uh, we've established it's about movies now. It's not so much about the comic books. But TV was also there, and now people got to see the premiere, or the pilot episode, rather, of Heroes. Did that, did that go over big? Was that a good thing for the Comic-Con crowd? Well, uh, according to the poll numbers of our viewers, it wasn't. But I'll tell you, they haven't seen it. I've seen the two-hour uh, pilot episode. It's fantastic. An amazing ensemble cast that you will grow to love. This is in the vein of Lost, very serious uh, look at superheroes in, in real life. And I'll tell you what, what I love about this pilot is at the very end of the pilot show, we, get, we know exactly where the show is going, unlike Lost, which has completely lost me. Well, uh, the, problem, the problem with Lost, I mean, the problem with Heroes is that it's a hybrid of X-Men and Lost. And if, I think if anything really made a splash there, it continues to be Lost. It has lost a lot of steam in its second season, but this is still the show that everybody wants to see finally move forward. And at Comic-Con, they finally announced a few things that it did. That we're well, get finally to. move forward to where? It's, it's like when Twin Peaks started to suck, they would introduce a new MacGuffin every episode, new characters. Enough with the flashbacks. Show me what is going on. Wrap it up third season. Uh, give me a break. I mean, Lost, is, Lost is over. I think it's run out of steam. All right, we'll see, if, we'll see if Heroes can take over the late night crown. For now, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and chatting about the Comic-Con. We'll see if all this buzz holds up and of course planning for next comic-con it's already underway marked down july 26th through the 29th 2007 on your calendars thanks to chris mel and scott for keeping us all in the loop chances are it came from ebay what's going on here all right lots of comic book related items just hit ebay to cash in on this year's comic-con so if you've got some spare change lying around you haven't spent it on a foam core sword or 
something like that. That's where all my money went. You might want to get your hands on issue numero uno. That's right, the first issue nice. of the amazing Spider-Man. Now, if you do buy this personally, I don't know about you, Zach, I, I recommend that you sell it before the, a bad Spider-Man movie turns the web one to the next Captain America. Yeah, it could be just one movie, like Topher Grace bombs, and could it just happen. doesn't work out. Yeah. I, are we going to see you naked, by the way, Mary I, Jane? Are we, are we finally going to see something I in this movie? I hope so, man. I've been to two of them already. I'm hoping this one is the one, you know? If Sandman gets into the panties, though, she'll be crabby. Oh, you heard that, you heard, you heard the oh dear. $17,999. <laughs> Zero bids. Not surprising. Not surprising at all. You want to know what time it is in Metropolis? Gotham City. Krypton and 97 other imaginary places. How can I do that? Well, I'll tell you. You can bid on 100 Superman oh. watches. That is right. Most of these watches are brand new, but a handful of them are from the good old days when comic book superheroes knew what was good for them and stayed on the pages of the comic books where they belong. Oh, easy. I'm sorry. Easy, Tiger. I'm sorry. And now, how many... I'm, I'm really... My, my question is, how many Superman watches is too many Superman watches? Apparently, a hundred of them. Yeah, anybody because, bidding uh, on this thing? No one. And they're only asking $29,000, which... 290 bucks a watch, is that right? No, 2900 a watch? Uh, something like Start, run, calc. I was much gooder in English. Yeah, you were. Did you ever want to dress up as Christopher Reeve? Well, the good news is this next auction, it doesn't involve an equestrian riding outfit. No. no, not even a riding crop. You can own Christopher Reeve's costume from the very first Superman movie. But that's not all, Zach. Why? As a bonus, they've reused this costume in the spectacularly bad sequel, Superman 3. Hmm? Best of the trilogy, if you ask me. Seriously. And I think that Superman 3, actually, i got to be honest, it's kind of a minus here. Because yeah. unless that you can prove that the cape was used to douse the flames from uh, Richard Pryor's unfortunate pre-basing incident. Ooh, okay, that's yeah. That's the only, <laughs> the only way that cape is going up in value. Yeah, exactly. Zero yeah. bids. $18,586. That's it? That's it. Wow. Chump change. Chump change. I just want a little curl like Christopher Reeve. You know, just one. Do the, can you do the Reeve curl? I can do it. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Right. Finally, the pride of Comic-Con 06. The mystery attendee oh, bag. Now we're talking. What this we is get? like the gift bag you get when you go out to a film premiere or something like that or some stupid party. But if you missed Comic-Con 2006, this mystery bag promises all the fun and excitement of being at Comic-Con, except without all the fun and excitement, the comics, the cool toys, limited edition gear, and the scores of teenage girls dressed up as your favorite comic book hotties. Yeah. I was there. And I can't believe that when you put three pounds of worthless crap in a plastic bag, that its contents add up to almost... Thirty dollars. Oh, not bad. Not okay. bad at all, you know. But if you're expecting Comic Con 06 in a bag, prepare to be extremely disappointed. It's hard to to get the scent. <laughs> it really into is. Into there. That, that geek scent that you were talking about earlier. You have to take like you know? uh, like like the hamster shavings that they used to line a pen. Put that in the, the bag. That's how you do some, it. You got to make Vaseline. it bulkier and also for travel. Yeah. You know, because comics rip in the mail. It's twenty nine seventy five. Two bids right oh, now. Oh, that's not bad. Not too bad. You know, I would, I mean, it's a bunch of pamphlets and stickers, but not even stickers that go in your car. The stuff that you have to put inside your window. Oh, those are the worst. The worst. Oh, well. You know what, folks? You can always expect the unexpected. When it came from eBay! Oh, good. Sure did. Coming up after the break, folks, we are showing you the magic of Happy Tree Friends, and we have even more coming.